Madness Podcast, the best of the underground, Big Madness, your ritual.
Oh, Jesus. Here we go, right off the bat, huh? Fucking uh, drinking whiskey and hanging out with some uh, some sexy Star Wars fans. Jesus, I'm down <laughs> on my knees. Jesus, I'm down on my knees. I do my best work on my knees. Jesus, come inside me. <laughs> Giddy up. Hey, folks, welcome. It's Friday, Friday, Friday. Hope uh, you had a good weekend or a good week. I'm sorry, we're, we're rolling into the weekend. I've had a long week, so my mind's a little shattered. But uh, do me a favor, check out Lowbrow Saints Tattoo Collective, 612353 Four seven five five. If you're looking to get some tattoo work done, give Jason and the folks over at Lowbrow Saints a shout. Uh, shoot me an email, lowbrowsaints at gmail.com. Uh, one of our new sponsors is the Shred Den, now open. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Monday through Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. 9100 85th Avenue North, Suite 100 in actually Brooklyn Park. I need to change that. Uh, give them a call, 763-350-2191, or uh, hit them up on uh, on their uh, website, www.theshredden.com. Dot net and uh, go over to uh, uh, give uh, give uh, Natanic a little tap ski in the nut skis for us. You know that's uh, that's right? Rob's joint. He's a former student of mine. Yeah, good dude. Go check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on uh, good authority that there's a pretty sweet Laney amp on consignment there that someone should buy. Oh yeah, yeah. Is that one of yours or something? Yeah, just drop it off this afternoon. <laughs> Did you? That's fantastic. Let me just drop this in without everyone knowing. <laughs> is, is my mic working okay? I can't hear myself. Yeah. I, I'm good? Okay, cool. You, you should be fine. I just want to make sure I'm not, you know, spitting on the thing and, like, no, making you, love to it. You know? I can I can hear you just great. Oh, man, I charge for that. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, Paul? It's been a long time. Hey, yeah, it's like 13 years. Man, I'm I'm great. I really have no complaints. Fantastic. So, yeah. uh, so I want to do what, what was that? Uh, what was that first tune that we listened to? Laurentian Divided. That's uh, from the uh, the premier Isilic album. Nice. And yeah. you can get that on U- uh, on uh, iTunes and uh, Bandcamp. It's, and- it's on all the stuff. I mean, I, I would say uh, I would say buy it from Bandcamp because okay. not only can you get the original studio audio, so it's twenty four bits. Okay. Um, but it also comes with an instrumental version of the album. So oh, awesome. If, so if you're somebody who you know appreciates the uh, the 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 musical part, or the, I'm sorry, the instrumental part of sure. metal, but not the vocals, because we know not everyone's into that. You, you have that as well. So, yeah. you, so you get both versions of the album. You can download it in, in any quality you want and get all the album artwork, which Jordan worked on on that for us. He worked on, on the design. The and, layout. Uh, and then yeah. Greg, uh, our bass player, does all the art, of course. Now, that was the last time that I that you and I spoke. Um, uh, you and Greg came into the studio. The oh, that was Aaron. Was it Aaron? Yeah, that wasn't me. Oh, Jesus. See, that's how it is. Yeah. You weren't able to make it. Yeah, I, I was probably I was probably giving a lecture. Yeah, see so. how it is. Yeah, one job. Yeah, I fuck everything up. It's all good. Giddy up. No, that's, it, how, that's it was, how I keep. That's how I keep things going. It was just great. F- stumble into the next thing, and you know, just, fuck yeah. it all up, dude. Fuck it. Happenstance. And yeah, duct why tape. not? Fuck. Why not? Giddy duct up. tape's good. It keeps shit together. Sometimes, right? <laughs> so, uh, how are things going, man? What What is new? What What's good? <clears throat> Teaching. Te- teaching like the Dickens? Yeah, yeah. Lecturing, I mean, doing all kinds of stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, of course, I've run my own business for over 24 years now. Right. And, uh, that's been going great. Students are awesome. I'm, you know, I'm really lucky to have a, a really amazing group of students. Mm-hmm. You would know you were one at one point. Yes, I was. So, so again, proof, proof right there of yeah. excellence. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, what, it's been really solid since COVID actually. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I mean, I, a big advantage I had is I've been teaching online courses for, you know, a long time. So to me, it was nothing new, but to a lot of people it was. And, right. um, so I was able to at least help students kind of get set up, but, mm-hmm. um, but I've had a, a solid schedule since then. It's, I mean, it's, it's a good problem to have when you have to turn people down. I hate having to turn people down, but it's. Again, that's a good problem to have. Um, what I really loved about it, though, is that you did make an effort, no matter what. If you could, if you could schedule me in or get me in at any point, you were always cool enough to give me a shout and say, "Hey, dude, we could do this if you want. Yeah, we could do this if you want. Yes, I could sneak you in here. Somebody canceled there. You want to come in a little bit early? And it always that that was awesome for me. Yeah. So yeah, no, thank you. I, no, I, no, I, mean, I appreciate. It. I try. I, you know, uh, I mean. I care, you know, I, I want to, you know, to me, my, my students are first priority, no matter what. Um, so that's, especially, you know, my, my, my one-on-one private students and, and that's great. Um, so that's been going well. I uh, just had the, uh, uh, celebrated, uh, 10 years at my space. Actually, it's over 11 now, uh, renovated the entire thing. It's really, you'll have to come and see it sometime. Yeah. It looks great. Um, you're still at the same place. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Ru- Rudolph or Randolph? Randolph. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Randolph. Yeah. And, uh. 
so that's been just wonderful. Uh, what else? Um, back to doing some lecturing and things like that. I do a series. I do a. So at, normally before COVID, every year I was going. Uh, sometimes I was flying out back out to Amsterdam. That's where I graduated and where I did some of my first uh, teaching for my PhD work. And um, which, by the way, having a, I tell people having a PhD just means you're really good at one thing and just <laughs> fucking useless at everything else. <laughs> you want me to help you with anything useful? Your car, or, or you want, or you need me to help you put that shelf together? No, nah, I'm not your dude. <laughs> I mean, I just like, don't. You need to know something about music, fine. But anything else, I, I can't help you. I'm sorry, but I can doctor approve shit. Um, <laughs> Write people notes. Yeah, and shit. yeah. It's like doctor you, said you cannot go to school today. <laughs> but uh, um, and uh, but anyway, but I, I've. Uh, been, I usually do a few lecture series. Uh, typically, a graduate student needs to go to four lectures each year. So I try and do, um, or seminars, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I usually try and do um, a few topics each year, and I try to make them fun. I usually do one th- for my thesis, and then um, I will do two film score lectures where okay. I do a deep dive into a particular movie, and I usually always pick one Star Wars movie because, duh, and uh, until I've gone through all of them, and then I'll do another film of my choice. Uh, but one thing I, I do differently with, instead of just talking about the music and how it affects the film, is that if a film like, well, when I did my Empire Strikes Back one, which is probably my most popular one, um, is I also had access to all the alternate takes of the music and, and music that wasn't used, and I'd reinsert it back into the film and show them, hey, here's uh, here's how, uh, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to make it. Pun- make noise, all kinds of noise. I don't um, give a shit. And uh, again, I also charge for that. Normally. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, giddy up. Um, but <laughs> but I'll, I'll reinsert uh, uh those tracks and, and show here's how different the scene is, right? And, right. and how different of a feeling it, it, it's going to get. So that's a lot of fun to do. Um, and then I also do a series on the satanic panic, how it applies to music, but more specifically to the 90s. Because uh, uh, you can find a lot of stuff on the late 70s and the 80s, but we don't hear a lot about how the satanic panic changed in the 90s. And um, I, I lecture on that for a couple of reasons. One, because not enough people talk about it. Uh, Two, it was really the the last big push of the Christian coalition against uh, heavy metal and rock and roll music, or right. just music in general. Right. Um, but at that time, I was the target demographic, right? I was the long-haired teenager, and um, uh, I couldn't go anywhere on public without, you know, a man and a woman coming up to me and saying, hey, uh, can we talk? Sure. We're really worried about your soul, and can we pray with you? And, and I'd let them go through the whole thing. I'm, and, and none of it was done with any like did, malice. Did you, you, so you didn't like, <laughs> no, you know, no, no uh, like that. Well, I'm not done yet. Hold on. <laughs> not done yet. Um, so they, uh, uh, so I would get, you know, I, I don't want to say accosted because the people who are doing it, I, they meant it from a good place. Sure. Like they weren't, you know, they, they weren't, you know, like a, like an, like a hate pastor, which I mean, I'll tell you about some of that, but, um, the, uh, yeah, they weren't like mean people, so I just kind of wanted to see where this would go. But after a while, it definitely got annoying, right? Yeah. Because I'd be out like shopping with my mom, and you know, I'd get someone would come to me at Brookdale. If anyone remembers Brookdale, um, and uh, you know, they'd be, "Can we talk to your son about you know, blah blah blah?" And after a while, it got kind of annoying. So I started replying in kind of interesting ways. Dude, like, what were you wearing that people are actually coming up to you to to mess with? Oh, you? Oh, like well, that? well, this was not. I mean, and and and. To be clear, this wasn't just like me. It was anybody who looked heavy metal. Oh, okay. Right? The whole point was to save the souls sure. of, of these of these heavy metal right. heathens. Um, I had long red hair. Sure. I oftentimes had some type of heavy metal shirt on. In fact, dude, here's how cool my mom was, right? You know, my mom's like, you know what we need to get you? We need we need to get you the butchered at birth shirt. I'm going to wear that everywhere <laughs> we go, right? I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I mean my, man, my mom was so awesome. And uh, so... Uh, but it, yeah, so it wasn't just me. It was just that, oh, here's a long haired male who is right. lost and we're really afraid that the devil has your soul and right. we want to make sure you're okay. And I'm like, oh, all right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, I did get to a point where it was so annoying where, where they would come up and say, Hey, uh, do you mind if we talk to you? I'm like, I'm so glad because I want to talk to you about Jesus. Right. And, uh, then I would, you know, kind of give them the shit back or I would just say, I will only talk to you if it involves anal sex. Right. <laughs> And, and that seemed to be a big thing in in this whole Christian uh, coalition movement. Uh, I think one of my favorite moments I was doing post secondary at the U of M. So that was where you could go to college when you were still in high school, eleventh sure. and twelfth grade. And so I took advantage of that. And back then the U was really big about letting everybody kind of have a word. So they let the Christian coalition 
show up there and I kept all the literature, yeah. right? And all the stuff about, here's my God hates men with long hair and no ring rings because ah, right. they are perverts who want to be women, ah, right? And, um, but, but they had this guy <laughs> who was speaking. Didn't, didn't Jesus have long hair? He did, he did, he did. Uh, Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was kind of kinkier, though. Yeah. I can't imagine it being long and, you know, look just. Oh, his balls were. It, it, oh, I'm not talking about his, his balls. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. But uh, so I, you sure there's clarification there. Uh, absolutely, there need to be clarification. I, I have you, let me let me ask: Have you ever been approached by a, a, a parishioner or a Jesus person to like wanting to save you at any point? Oh yeah, really? Like, how many times in your life you think? Just a handful. Um, one in particular that I that comes to mind: I was at the state fair with my dad, and I think I had a Pantera shirt on or yeah. something. And there was some booth, some Christian booth, male or female, come up to you. Or was it just a bunch of different people? It was a male and a female that were kind of the hosts of this thing. It always yeah. is. It's and always a male and a female. Usually husband and wife. They had me, they kind of cornered me. Yeah. And uh, asking me, like, all these questions. And I basically kind of just told them, like, no, that's not true. No, yeah. it's like, oh, they they sacrifice fucking animals or whatever. I'm like, yeah. no, they don't. Who's they? Pantera. Oh, 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 God, sorry. I'm, <laughs> never mind. Because I was wearing one of their shirts. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, I sorry. mean, really, it, re- it wouldn't and matter really, because yeah, it would yeah. say the same yeah, thing yeah, about right. that. You know what and, I mean? And they're like, well, just ask me, like, well, why do you think it's okay to do this or blah, blah, blah? Like, but they're not doing that. Like, this like this song is about, like, you know, a struggle with addiction and trying to overcome that. Or right. this song's just about fucking having a good time, right. you know? Yeah. And... Uh, they really didn't have too much to, to, yeah, to come my, back in it. My dad said that I had uh, handled myself pretty well. Yeah. I was articulate in my responses, and sure. they didn't really have an argument after that. And they just kind of let me let me go. Right. Uh, it, w- yeah. It, it, so, like you said, it, it's it was always a, a couple, usually husband sure. and wife. And uh, but when the you had uh, at, so this is like, give you an idea. This is like 95, 94, yeah. 95, right? I graduated in ninety five. Um, high school, not college. Excuse me. And um, dang, I'm burpy today. Um, <laughs> so they had this guy, you know, doing, you know, the the typical, you know, people around him, and he's, you know, evangelizing and everything. And, and uh, the big push they were doing is how heavy metal's going to make you want to have sex. And I'm like, oh, trust me, it's not just heavy metal. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but this particular dude was really into the whole sodomy you know, anal sex kind of stuff. So he like, was really into He was really into, stuff. like, you are into some butt stuff. Um, someone said I would talk about butt stuff tonight, so here we are. Um, <laughs> we, we ran right into wanted it. Wanted to I make mean. sure. Oh, I always run into it. Um, uh, man, I got, I got you from behind. I mean, I got you behind. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, uh, but my favorite moment of this whole thing, I think, was, uh, it was like the third day this guy was out there, and, and, and he was doing his thing, and he was, and I was walking up the steps to go and get some lunch, and, and, and that particular topic was the evils of MTV and, yeah. and the things that MTV will make you do. <clears throat> I'm walking up the stairs, and he points at me because, of course, he does. And he says, you, you masturbate in front of MTV. And I'm like, I don't have cable. <laughs> oh, I want to. I want to. Anyway, so, yes, yeah, so I lecture about, uh, about this particular time period and uh, kind of go in, into detail about... Uh, you know, how that changed. And then, of course, you know, you had the big hearing with um, John Denver and, of course, uh, uh, D. Snyder, and, and uh, uh, which is great. And you can s- still watch video of that. So I show bits of that. I also talk about how back masking changed and uh, and how back masking continued. In were, were you blown away as much as I, I mean, I was blown away when I saw the interview part with D. Snyder. Oh, it was great. He was just articulate as hell yeah. and just fucking coming at him. Well, and he just really explained it all. Yeah. And what I love about it is he did he came in as himself yeah. and you can see like, like Tipper Gore and Al Gore kind of going, <laughs> this guy doesn't know shit. And he just destroys him. Yeah. And then at the end of it, he makes it seem like, like Tipper Gore has some weird sex fetish with having your throat cut. You know, it was brilliant, you know? All right. And, and it was, I mean, I, yeah, so. I was floored. I was just like, yeah. holy shit, man, so, this is D. Snyder. Yeah. So it's a fun thing to talk about. Again, I bring all the literature that sure. I collected through uh, the many years and you know, talk a lot about how they would also wait out on the uh, sidewalks of school and they'd hand out prayer books. And, and usually this is, again, this is mostly fundamentalist evangelical stuff. You, know, you didn't really see Catholics doing this, right? Mm. Um, and, uh, and, and then you got to some of the... 
uh, some of the churches here in Minneapolis that are um, like hate preachers, right? And they were big into that. Mm. And I've got a bunch of their literature too. So that's a that's a really fun lecture to do. Explain that though. Like what what do you mean by hate speeches? Like like they just like homophobic stuff i mean just you, you just you name it yeah okay. i mean you've guys you got guys right now like greg Locke who are like this right who are um you know you know anybody lgbtq things like this they need to die you know things like right. that just really awful horrible things right. right um and uh and and their particular literature was about specifically men yeah. boys yeah who had long hair and or earrings right and they had entire literature about how God hated them and why. A lot of Old Testament stuff, like the Witch of Endura, which is this sort of um, weird little sliver of the uh, Old Testament that uh, uh, that talks about this 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 witch and that men were you know impersonating her. And also, it's a lot of women hate too. It's a lot of like women are 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 horrible. And men who want to look like women and dress like women are even worse because they pierce their ears and because they, you know, they have long hair. And of course, it's the idea of piercing the ear as, as owning a slave and things like that too, sure. which is more like uh, Exodus twenty-one kind of stuff. The instructions for how to beat your slave and things like that. Right. So, um, uh, so it uh, it's interesting to to talk about that stuff. And um, uh, so normally, it's it, these are private lectures just for the students. Every now and then, we open it up to the public. By public meaning anyone at the school, so the, so the music students will get their credit, but you know no one else will. And then I like to open things for questions. I like to have a dialogue. Right? Sure. And um, again, it's first like just let the music students ask questions, and after this we can do a public dialogue. Sure. And I always have very interesting conversations after yeah. that, which is uh, fun. Some really interesting debates. People, uh, I like talking with people I don't agree with. Sure. But I like it when it can be like an actual conversation where we're still respecting each other and right. we're, we're right, talking right. about the topic not it doesn't turn into an ad hominem kind sure, of sure, 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 right? Right, so, right. and I always bring it back around to here's where the music part comes in right um, so that's the main focus and I also throw in little things about how here's why TMNT is evil right and and there's these great videos about here's why Star Wars is evil it's because right. Obi-Wan has this Obi magic and he says Obi 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 and then it all goes oh, you watch the movie right so <laughs> uh, it's great <laughs> What are some of the the the, the things that you've you've uh, had conversations with in some of those satanic panic type of things? Are there you mean with the with the public or yeah, with, yeah, yeah, with the students? The public. Well, even with the, I mean, all of it, any of it, the things that oh, stick gosh. out to you with that with, with that. I mean, are, are there some some good conversations or is it just kind of you know people attacking you, just saying what they've? It's a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, usually with the student. Well, I, I mean, the ones that stuck out the most to me are probably the ones that were really great conversations where we just talked about stuff, right? right? Um, now, um, I, now, I should probably bring this around, a little known thing. I also have, I, I double majored, I also have a, a philosophy degree with a specialty in world religions because okay. it's, it's just interesting stuff. Sure, right? sure. Um, so, you know, I had to read the Quran, the Bible, and all these things and, and, and understand, you know, how the Hebrew is translated and, right. and, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, but uh, so I got that degree by accident because I was taking philosophy courses for my electives for music because the, the professor is awesome. Dude named Bob Scottegard, super cool, super cool cat. I just love that guy. And he says to me one day, you know, Paul, you could do a double major, right? I'm like, I can? Well, yeah. I mean, your music uh, credits would count as a uh, electives for philosophy. I'm like, I can do that. He's like, yeah, man, play the game. I'm like, okay. All right, so that kind of happened by accident. But um that's I, beautiful I, that someone guide, guides you into that. Yeah, though, no kidding. I mean, that's yeah. that's really yeah. cool. Oh yeah, he was. I mean, I was. You know, man. I just just to just to segue here for a second. I've been really lucky that all my professors were just super cool cats. Yeah. Right. Um. And uh, not everyone gets to experience that, so I'm really lucky that that right. I did. Yeah, I did not know that one could do that, but uh, awesome. He hit you to it. But anyway, um. Oh boy, let's see. Um. Well, I think I think the ones where we come to an interesting mutual understanding where maybe I learned something and they learned something I think are the best ones as far as, you know, putting some goodness into the world. You know, any, I, any anything stick out? I, I think, I think the, the one that stuck, well, there's a couple that stuck out the most. One was, um, uh, the concept of, are there bad or evil sounds? And and whenever I kind of talk about music to like my music theory students, I say, what is music? Because I like to hear everyone's opinion, but then I'll say, well, I just say music is sound. It doesn't prescribe bad or good. Right. right? It's sound that we maybe arrange in a way that we think sounds cool. Right. Um, and uh, I had a couple students who were 
uh, indoctrinated uh, into believing that secular music was evil. Right. Um, which is a really hard thing to see because if you grow up listening to whatever kind of music you want and you've never had anyone looking at, um, or I, I should say, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, censoring or like, hey, if you, want, if you want to listen to this band, I need to listen to it first to see you know, how secular it is. And, and for those who don't know what secular music is, it's not religious music, right? right? And I've definitely had students where like, we'd have to sneak in like the music they wanted to learn under the guise of things, right? Oh, wow. So it was interesting to talk to people who grew up indoctrinated with the sphere of um, secular music and then to talk to them about it. Now, now when, you, when you experience stuff like that now, is this, are these students of yours when you're teaching now or is this like during uh, uh, school time? Like we, we, both. Okay, okay. Both, but mostly it's during school oh, time. Okay. But I have had students, private students who've, who've been there. Um, but do, you, do you have conversations with the, with with parents like that uh, on on allowing things, or you just yes. let it be what it is? And you yes, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, uh, so again, when it's in a college sense, they're adults, right? Um, if they're younger, I you know I'll usually say to my um, to the parents like, hey, I just want to let you know that you know your your son or your daughter um, is asking some really good questions, and um, I want to know what you're okay with because I don't want to step over any boundaries, right? Really, right? And I mean, usually by doing that, uh, I usually get at least with my private students to get a lot of no. I want my kid to ask questions about the world. Um, I want him to think about things, right? right? And I've got some man, I've got some kids who are like smarter than a lot of adults I know, and that's really cool to see, right? Yeah. And uh, but um, gives you hope, kind of. It does. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But uh, but some of these conversations. I have like after these uh, uh, lectures, um, especially when I meet a student who has, it's like their first time in life where they're on their own and they're able to make their own decisions uh, about where they want to go, what they want to believe, what they don't want to believe. Yeah. Um, and having them uh, tell me, you know, I was always, uh, I couldn't bring in whatever I wanted to listen to. I was told that this type of music was evil or bad. And to get them to sort of maybe to talk to them about it, hear their feelings, hear where they're coming from. And listen, that's right. the important thing, right? right? People, they, they love to wait their turn to talk, but you got to listen, right? right, right. Um, see where they're coming from and then tell them, well, let's think about what music is on a couple levels here. And to get them to maybe think and realize that, oh, there is no like inherently bad, evil music, right? Right. Um, it's nice to see that. It's nice to people escape from indoctrination. So there's so but those. A guy, but a guy like you can really fucking break that shit down for people to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Well, to where well, to where like the layman people are kind of like, well, you know, they they believe they fully um, believe that shit sure. that that they're that something's gonna you know, you know, you're gonna be possessed by right. something. Well, well, I think that's where the advantage of all, is also having the education right. in in, um, in uh, religious belief and sure. like that. I think that helps because I can. I can sympathize with that, right? right. Um, and um, I mean, you know, we may look at something like that and think, "Wow, that's really stupid." But if you go in with that attitude, you're not going to get anywhere, right? People aren't. I mean, some of the smartest people in the world can convince themselves of their own bullshit, right? Know, right? Right, so, right. right. So, um, so those are the ones that stuck out to me the most. Those are the ones that are, that are mo the most heartfelt to me, right? Um, then there's the fun ones, like the guy. Um, who was telling me about proof of demons because the Coke bottles were floating in front of him. What, say what? Yeah, so this <laughs> this guy was like, listen, now I said, I, I know that you were doing this lecture, right? And, and, and are you talking about Satan and are you a Satanist? I'm like, you did not listen to this lecture. But, uh, but sure, okay, what, what next? And he's like, well, I'll tell you what, man, I know there's proof of demons because I was sitting in my house one day and I'm like, by the way, I know plenty of people with an accent like that who are not smart, who are very smart. I'm sorry that I go right to that accent. <laughs> Um, but but I'm I'm sorry I can't help it but uh, I'm a horrible human being but uh, but he and, and he's like well I was sitting in my apartment I got this weird kind of feeling going in here right and three coke bottles they were floating in front of me they just stood there in in the air and I'm like this can't be right this must be a demon so I'm just gonna say Jesus go away. Jesus by the power of Christ go away and then and then they dropped and it was gone and I'm like do you have any like like I, I believe that you saw something right. Do you have any video of this? Well, no, I just got a crappy track phone. Next time this happens, get a good phone, right. and I would love to see the video of right. this. And then he went on this whole uh, tirade about... Um, uh, That's hilarious. Uh, he went on this whole tirade about, uh, uh, oh, what was it? He's, oh, right. He goes, well, see, I got this friend who lives next to me. She's a witch, but she's one of the nice ones, right? She's one of the white witches. And I think when she was doing a cantation one day, she said the wrong word and some bad ones came through. And I'm like, 
fucking awesome. And you're just like, <laughs> here's my here's my email address. I want to hear more, right? Um, so there's stuff like that. And then you get some people too who uh um you know come at it pretty strong where you know they've blamed me for again, they're not paying attention to the lecture, right? They've blamed me for spreading the word of Satan and this and I had to talk with this one dude about his beliefs and how he avoids secular music and why he does. Um, and it ended up going down this weird road where we started talking about, um, you know, uh, beliefs in a particular deity and would you, if they command you to do something. Would you have sex with them? Yeah, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 it got to a, but it got to a really scary part because we, so we were talking about, we got into death metal actually. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, his belief that, you know, death metal is the core music that Satan uses. I'm like, you sure it's not Celine Dion? Because that shit's pretty scary, right? You know? Um, but I asked... It, it, what the fuck does somebody say when you say something like that? Yeah. Do they just... Oh, uh, I mean, not... Uh, I uh, never got scared listening to that song. Yeah. She's like the whore of Babylon. <laughs> she will come in riding the scarlet dragon holding a goblet of fornication. I want that action figure, man. Fuck yeah. Uh, but, but, but where it got weird... <laughs> <laughs> it got weird. Was right there. It was right there. <laughs> I did not know you could put that in a goblet. I want one. Uh, uh, Hot toys, please make the whore of Babylon figure with the Scarlet Beast. Um, and um, but anyway, but but I ended up asking this guy. I I, I didn't know we were going to go down this road, but that's fun. It's all interconnected. But I said to him, if God commanded you to kill your neighbor's children, would you? And he said, Well, God wouldn't do that. He already has. So my question again is, would Yahweh? If Yahweh came to you and he commanded you to kill your neighbor's children, would you do it? And he said, yes. And I couldn't stop and say, you are fucking scary. You scare the shit out of me, right? And you, and you make all other Christians look bad, you know? Because I know people who are very religious who I, who I would have their back and I want them on my side. Sure, right? sure, sure. I know other people who are just pieces of crap, but that, that was scary, Right. To talk to someone who really believed that, right, and believed that music was an influence in, um, uh, no, I lost my train of thought. Son of a bitch. Uh, You'll come back. Yeah, well, I, but but it started with the conversation about evil music, and death sure. metal was a big part of it. Yep. And like, well, this is kind of funny, because you're talking about death metal, but now you're admitting that you will kill your neighbor's children. That's pretty scary, man. <laughs> you know, right? That's pretty. So that one stood out. Yeah, that's to the, needless to say to the next fucking level. Well, and like, the Coke one did too. It's like, why, I, I, well, I, here's like, the thing: why though. Coke? Why not Pepsi? Why? Right? Why? Why the? Why would you? I mean, I thought killing someone was like the the worst thing you could do. Um, you should read the Bible. <laughs> no, I should. There's a lot of killing I in it. Will not. So so is the I Quran. Have not, and I will not. You should. No, I shouldn't. It's insightful. No, it's not. Not at all. Now, it's a lot all, of people. It's act. all about power and control. So sure, I think sure. the I think the post is really I, I, about power and control. I like power and control. Uh, I I think uh, you know of course the most popular thing is the tritone right, uh, uh, and uh, you know it being legalized by the church for some time. We don't really know the exact years. We know that it, it could have started as early as the late 1600s, but we do know when we just look at the history of music that well we see it used a lot in the Baroque era. So probably towards the end of there, you know, there was some bishop who said, you know, I mean, uh, we've killed a lot of people. For for it, and every time we play B and F together, uh, the devil hasn't popped up yet, so maybe we should take that one back. You know, right? So uh, uh, there's that one. <laughs> That's amazing. What about these guys who are waiting to be hung? Ah, hang them anyway, right? That's there, so what are we going to play to this one? Yeah, right. So it's very. It's, so it's it's always been very interesting to me how uh, how religion and music, and this is this is why I went into. Um, uh, studying uh, musicology, especially ethnomusicology. Yeah. How do how do uh, how does music and people and culture um, and belief kind of intertwine with each other? Right. Yeah. Um, it's because it's, it's fascinating, you know. And um, the thing that really turned me on to that was pretty early on learning how a huge majority of people stop investigating new music to them. And what I mean by new music is is modern and new to them mm -hmm. uh, around. Uh, senior year of high school or freshman year of college. We kind of stay in this sort of like this same type of thing. And of course this, this, you know, breeds the rose tinted glasses and everything that I grew up with is better than the crap. Sure. Kids right, to, right, 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 right. Um, and I thought that was so weird. Yeah. I was like that. Why, you know, why would you do that? Right. And so it was interesting to kind of study the psychology of that and see uh, where that comes from. 
and and why. So, right. um, so that's why I tell all my students, don't be like that. Never stop investigating for right. yourself, right? Um, always listen for, for, for... Do people reasons. actually... I mean, I know the three of us in this room have, have done that and have never stopped in doing that and, and always look for something cool and always try to turn our friends on to cool stuff. That's kind of how we how we got it turned on to a lot of things. Yeah. Like, hey, man, have you ever... It's kind of like uh, uh, the Spotify thing where you play, you know you play a tune and then all of a sudden it's something close yeah. to that right we used to do that with our friends well you know uh, what i mean like uh, dude oh you got that album uh, you can have you heard this one have you heard that one have you heard this one you know what i mean yeah how old are you again jordan 36 yeah, that matters. yeah so i mean i mean you probably weren't around for tape trading then <laughs> no no but you remember tape trading oh, right yeah. yeah i mean that was uh, That's so, huge. So for those of you who don't know what tape trading is, is that you would make a mixtape for your friends. Yeah. You know, and, and I remember that's the first time I heard Carcass. Yeah. My friend made me a mixtape. I'm like, yeah. what is this? You I know, mean, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah right. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I mean, so tape trading was was the big thing yeah. for for us. And now it's so easy to hear new stuff. And one, you know, and... Um, Dude, why do we not do that now with like I playlists? Do. Well, like, I do. hey, dude, I got a playlist that you need to hear. So, you know what so, I mean? So, the, the first assignment that, and you remember this, I'm yeah. sure, the first assignment I give all my students is I want you to make a playlist of things that you love that I you want to be able to play. I think I still have do, the one I made. Yeah. That's great. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I do that all the time for students. You know, I, I mean, it's it's fun to do. It's way easier now than sitting down and doing tape trading. But right. it's never been easier to hear new stuff. Yet there are still people who are like, uh, you know, but the thing is I probably hear the most when I get um, adults who come in um, that are, you know, uh, sometimes my age, but usually older. And I get the, well, there was no great music made after 70, uh, or after uh, 1976, right? I said, uh, no, that'd be 1776. <laughs> Everything from 7076 is all garbage after that. Once Bach died, the Rococo period was out, garbage. You know, right? I'm just like, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> Listen to old music. Yeah. So. It is kind of crazy to think about old music and how they just pumped out f albums after album. You yeah. know what I mean? Like one great band would release two, three. Mm -hmm killer albums when you look back at it now it, it, you know it's funny if you look at like uh, like I have, I have this entire collection of everything Bach had done sure it's 155 CDs sure it's 155 albums it's a lot of music man oh, you know, right? <laughs> so you know Mozart's 175 albums you yeah. know so it's kind of it's interesting to think about it in that way uh, but yeah a lot of this again is that rose tinted glasses kind of thing yeah um, the stuff that I grew up with was the best you remember the things that were and this is not just music this is like yeah. video games anything i know tons of people my age who are like bah, back in my day video games were the best bah, 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 bah. Right, it's like, right. oh my god dude, you're old right <laughs> I, I know people you, i know people younger than me who are so fucking old and i'm like dude leave me your shit when you die right, right. it's like come on man you know right and um uh uh, nothing is wrong with nostalgia. In fact, yeah. it's quite healthy. And nothing is wrong with um, having a preference. But um, uh, and especially like when I get into theory with my students, um, I'm like, hey, if your if your uh, older folks want to say all your stuff's the same, here's how you show them that all their stuff is exactly the same. You know, right? So it's right. kind of so that that's kind of fun to do. But I just never understood this idea of stopping to investigate and. And wanting to hear new things, it's like when you go see a, a a band. Like I think one of my most favorite memories was uh, Huey Lewis. It was one. Of the, it was like the last show he did here before his hearing got really bad. And uh, you know, there, you go for those hits, and of course you go for the hits, right? Because yeah. it's good stuff. But um, in a lot of these shows, you play new music, and people don't want to hear the new music. I'm like, what? And at the show, I think he did it better than I've ever seen. He's like, all right. Now, I'm going to do something that you're never supposed to do with these shows. I'm going to play something new. Oh. And, and when I'm done, <laughs> I want you to pretend that you love it. And uh, But it was a great tune. I'm like, yeah, I want to hear new stuff right, by right. bands I like. Come on. You know, right? Um, I got a question for you. Sure. Did, did you happen to see the the greatest night in rock and roll thing that they had on and Netflix with the, the We Are the World thing? Oh, no, I haven't. Where they yet. break it down? No, no, I haven't yet. No, I... It is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But I think you should check it out because if you like Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis, abs Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper out of oh. all of the people that are in that room, mm -hmm. and there are some amazing musicians in that room, right. and they break it down for each one of them. But I think Huey Lewis and Cindy Lauper, between the people that they were, you know, from the person that starts their little rip all the way to where they, and they stop right before Huey Lewis. And he, they, they, they question him and he expresses like, 
holy fuck, this was so-and-so before me. And then, you know, he comes in and, and when you think about that song, you're just like, whatever, you know what I mean? It's sure. like a, it's a, it's a charity song. It's, right. It is what it is. Right. But when you, when you look at it from its inception all the way through and Lionel Richie is just like this iconic thing and he's doing the Grammys and he's doing like all the shit that same night and they go back and they work all night long on this fucking tune and people are partying and they're trying to stop them from partying and they eat and people leave and like all this thing. But Huey Lewis does a fucking fantastic job. Oh, in that that's thing. cool. I have to check it out. And then. he is just, he's like, he's, you can see his anxiety of like, damn, there's so many great musicians in this room, so many amazing voices in this room, and here I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same with Cindy Lauper, too. Yeah. And when Cindy Lauper finishes, everybody's just like, they, the whole place erupts in, you know, applause. It's it's yeah. pretty amazing. That, that's cool. I'll have to check that out then. Well, now, do, do you remember this? Would, you wouldn't remember this. <laughs> do you remember We Are Stars? That, that was the heavy metal version? Nope. Oh. Nope. Oh. Now, I remember seeing video of it, but I don't remember the song. Oh, man. Uh, when we're done, we should go on to YouTube and watch this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a good chunk of it is Dio, right? But it's got, like, Neil Shun. It's got all these people on it. And this really great, like, like it feels like a 12-minute shred fest between, you know, George Lynch and everybody. But, I don't know, it's kind of a rough song. Um, I mean. What is what, it? We are what? We are stars. Good intention, but oof, it's not one of the best ones I've heard. But that's my personal opinion, right? It's good to like things. I like when people like things. It's not good to like you things. Hear, you hear, like aid stars? Quiet, you. <laughs> hearing aid, we are st we're stars. Yep, that's it. This one here? Yep. Oh, yeah, there's George Lynch right away. Yep. Yeah. A lot awesome. of D.O. You got some Halford in there. You've got... Oh, uh, Vivian Campbell, too. Vivian Campbell, yep. Ingve Malmsteen, of course. Wow. So it's a bunch of like metal dudes. 80s, 80s metal dudes coming in and, and doing that, doing that, deal, doing, huh? doing their part to help out. So, wow. yeah, I, I mean, that's that. fine. That's cool. Check it out. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So I don't think anybody does that anymore. I think that'd be still, still a fantastic thing to do. There was uh, a, there was a Satriani song called, um, uh, uh, songs without words. And that was a charity thing. That is a beautiful piece of music, by yeah. the way. So it's more, yeah, so there, that's still being done, but not like on this, you know, none of this grand, grand scale, scale. Of, yeah, all, yeah. Of, all these, of all these people. But, but it still happens, so, yeah. Yeah, that's fucking, that's awesome, man. I mean, so with this, this uh, the religion thing, and with, all, with the, so, so you're doing a lot more of these lectures again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, um, uh, uh, lectures on movie scores, Satanic panic stuff out of my thesis stuff like that is, is what it is. So and well, I try I try to make them fun, uh, and I try to make them a little more interactive instead of just a guy up here you know talking. I mean, there's a lot of that, but I try and and make it entertaining. I try to make it personable. Um, when I show up, I'm not wearing a big suit and crap. I look like this, you know. Right. And I I, I I I, you know, I like it if people call me Paul or just Doc Paul. Yeah. You know, Doctor Rush's so. Doctor Rush. Yes, top drawer. It's pretty awesome, though. Well, thank you. you. You've earned it. Just like your students said, you've earned it. Why yeah, not? Yeah, right? yeah, and that's very nice of them, too. So, but and That's I, why I but, did it. I mean, you just said it kind of in passing. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. like, hey, it'd be cool if I could do that. Because my like, students yeah. asked for it, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't use it as like a preface for who I am. Right? Sure. And I know people who do. You know, like, hello, I am Dr. S. Right. right? I'm just right. like, oh, whatever, dude. You know, right? It's like, that's, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I that's not the most important you, part. You don't of me. go like this? No, 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 <laughs> no. It's usually like, hello, my name is Paul. I collect Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Star Wars shit. And I happen to teach music. Didn't we talk about the fucking, the, the, the tiger butthole or something? Didn't we talk about oh. that? You, didn't you have to order an extra tiger butthole or something? No, I've got plenty of tiger buttholes. No, I could have swore you said you had, you lost one and you had to order one. Oh, no, there was a part missing, but it wasn't in the tiger. Okay, okay. Yes, that would be the majestic tiger. Okay, folks, the, for those of you who aren't Lego nerds. <laughs> The Majestic Tiger is the first set that has an anatomically correct anus, and it's fantastic. And what I love about this is that there had to be meetings about this, right? Listen, we got this idea. We got this idea. Listen, like we're trying to make everything kind of realistic. The, the proportions are right. We've got all this stuff. But listen, we all have had a cat, and we all know what a cat does. When you love your cat, you pat on that shit. When you get the ass... 
you are now basically married to your cat. Right. Okay, all right. So, so we should respect. Jordan, is that true? <laughs> no, it, no, it's true. It's true. It, you know this. Although Jordan's got the weird thing where he's got the hairless cat, so it's like a suction cup everywhere. He's sitting <laughs> Little kiss marks on all the corners and stuff. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, no, but no, yeah, it actually has it, it has a butthole. And what I also like is not only do they have to bring this up, and they have to say, are there any existing pieces that could be the butthole, right. or do we make a specific butthole piece? And so yeah. they went with like one of the little flower pads. And of course, when that happened, I took all the flower pads I could and put them on the back of of <laughs> all of my Lego sets. <laughs> Your AT AT. Okay, all right, we're going to talk about this right now. All right, you, you <laughs> motherfucker, you brought this up. I'm going to tell everybody right now. I posted on Jordan's page. And I messaged it to you. It's, it's a commercial yeah. of C-3PO. Okay. We're talking Anthony Daniels okay. doing C-3PO. Okay. Yeah. Now, C-3PO is an interpreter droid who speaks millions of languages. Right, Jordan? He's the golden. He's the gold guy that walks and, around and, with the C-3PO. And, oh, that's uh, R2-D2, sir. And guess what he says? What does he say? He says, at, at, oh. Ooh, Anthony Daniels is wrong. Oh. Ooh. I have it on good authority. That is my, uh, my pal George, who I have on speed dial. <laughs> says it's uh, ATAT. AT. Uh, of the jungle? Is that what you're talking <laughs> about? Oh, oh, you mean Lucas? I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Nice. Well, call him up. Let's hear it. Yeah. No, no. He's he's uh he's busy. <laughs> it's kind of like how it's kind of like how Optimus Prime drove me here, but you can't see him now because he's our <laughs> He had you to know, go get some I gas. I asked my other friend Harrison, <laughs> and he said, uh, "I don't care." <laughs> <laughs> well, at least uh, you know, at least uh, you know, you know what what a chicken walker is. So, what uh, <laughs> was that in Atst? <laughs> no, chicken walker. <laughs> Jordan, it, Jordan, I've been doing this forever. This has been like, a, a like, like the it's, thing. It's <laughs> pronounced A T A T. No, it's at at. That is the official. No, it's not. I can prove that. I got Jordan speed dial too. Somebody's got to call him. You got to. You got to bug him. I don't. I, I don't care who it is. It calls a Listen, George that you know. If, if C three PO says it's at at, yeah. Well, it's at R two D two says it's. No, that's that that that's fuck you is what he's saying there. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing back for that, do you, you little shit? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. I'm just gonna say that this blueberry lemon turned out really fucking good. I after six months of uh I did uh some blueberry oh, I almost dumped it on my mouse. Um some blueberry lemon mead and it's six months old. Or close to it, right? 14th. Very close to it. It turned out really well. Tastes good. Unless it's just the black currant that's coating my tongue to make this taste good. Could be that too. Show that bottle, by the way. I just wanted to make this the camera view because this is the coolest fucking bottle ever. That's, uh, would that be satanic? No. A gargoyle? That, that's no. actually protection, right? It's Yes. Okay. Let's make it sure. Doc. <laughs> How's Marty, Doc? Oh, uh, it's great. Adam D says that I am correct, that it is AT AT. Who says? Walker. Jordan is correct. Who? Adam Who? D. Adam D from uh, from uh, Wolf Mask. Nope. He says you're wrong. Paul, he, uh, no. It's, Adam it's, did it's say okay that Jesus wrong. loves oh, it, both it, it, of you it, it, guys, oh. by the way, too. Who says that? I'm never wrong. At, Adam but. D from uh, from Wolf Mask. Oh, he, oh. he said Jesus loves you both. Thanks. Oh, well, he does. It's, see, the, now the problem I have with that isn't the love, it's the age gap. That's kind of what bothers me about it a little bit. So you'd be, you'd be, he'd be a cradle robin pretty much. Oh, most definitely. He would, he would probably still give you the. Yeah. Runs in the family. You're right. Yeah. He does. That's kind of weird. Yeah. But still. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Adam, thank you for joining us, by the way. Adam, it's uh, at Adam. MMH. Uh, I believe we should talk about Mr. 305. Don't, don't indulge her. That, that's just what I, I just, just see. I'm just replying. I mean, I mean, just saying what I see there. You know what I mean? That's clearly something I don't. You don't know? No. We're, we're 305. Gonna what? We're going to move on from that. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. All right. Good enough. What is it? I, do, I want to know now. Now I'm just super curious. It's an ATAT. -AT. Oh, okay. It's at at. 
I mean, they attacked Echo Base on Hoth. Okay. ADAT. Yeah. Yeah. They all have like acronyms. None of the other ones are pronounced different. It's it's the letters of the yeah, like ATST, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, but not at at. C three PO seven. I mean, he is a. He is the interpreter. C three PO is going to catch some hands. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, you come to Galaxy's Edge with me, and we can do that. <laughs> I'll be How'd there. Did you get kicked out? I fought C three PO. I just pu- Mr. Worldwide. Talk about like you know, just punching a baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the same thing right there, right? Baby had it coming. Got he it. can't. He can't really. How, he does that weird. His elbows Did don't really see pivot. You know the new Black Series figure that they have. It's a three PO when he's when his head gets mounted to yeah. the battle droid. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so then they well, have the battle or there's the, a bla- his, his body with the battle droid. There's a Hot Toys of that too. Is there really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I don't even know what the fuck you guys are talking hot, about. So hot, hot toys are like really like. Like, they are the cream of the crop uh, figures. They're expensive, but they're fucking like, awesome. The clothes are made of actual, like, leather and fabric and metal. and Everything's handmade. Everything's to handmade. scale, and, everything. Yeah. Now, are they, like, the tall G.I. Joes? Are they tiny or are they full-size? Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll show you a I picture. I just got a Kylo Ren, and it's awesome. Check really? this out. Mr. Paul, Paul you're not that old. You were like 40, not even 45, correct? Uh, hold on a second. What? Holy it, shit. Yeah. That is a fucking figure? Yep. Yeah. Wow. That's rad. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but that's really cool. That's really cool. Giddy on up. And that you ha- you own that one? Yeah. Dude, that's badass. Yeah. And you have Kylo Ren is what you said? Mm-hmm. I, cool. I, I've got a bunch of hot toys. I've got this. I've got, I've got Grogu in the man. I have a life size Grogu. It's very how, cute. how big is it? Life size. Oh, life size. Oh, it's nice. A, it's about as tall as a Grogu. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You're asking about age. But what's it? You said I'm. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, um, Adam D said, uh, Mr. Paul, you were not. Uh, you're not that old. You're uh, like 40, 45, right? Forty seven. 47. Look at that. Just like Mr. Greg, he's only 42 <laughs> and not that old either. Young Buck, you're high as shit right now, aren't you, dude? I'm old. You see, this is like, this is very, this is. It's distinguished. Yeah, I don't know about that, but. It's distinguished. It's just old. It's just how it is. Giddy, I'm not old. No, you're young. You're a young man. Um, now, uh, let me see here. How about the, the, the flamenco stuff? Have you been doing much of that? Have you oh, been yeah, writing that. some of that stuff? I mean, are you... I know we have a song that we're going to listen to, but I, I like, have, are you still working on things like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is kind of never... Well, so my original idea was to have another flamenco album out by now, but the acyclic stuff has just been moving along so well. I, I prefer to concentrate on one thing at a time, sure. generally, and I'll do some... Uh, but, I, you know, but I've got a few new flamenco songs written um, that are going to be ready to go, uh, but I want to concentrate on the acyclic stuff. Now, right we now. did hear uh, a bit of flamenco in that first song yep. that we listened to as yep. well. I know we were talking right before we went on. You said that there's a nice little excerpt in there yeah so folks if you haven't checked that out go go back and l- listen to that one that's that's a pretty heavy tune it's yeah tune. Oh, thank you yeah um uh actually uh Isilic has been doing uh these things we're calling the not Isilic Isilic shows <laughs> so aaron and i will do flamenco and then greg will come in and join us and then uh greg will do his experimental thing called uh salamander key it's this really cool electronic um moments of industrial kind sure. of stuff. it's really super cool and uh him tapping a bunch of pedals and keeping oh, things God, moving you should along. See, you and should see this thing. I bet it's cool. Dude, it's really cool. He's a freak. I know. He's, I know. I know. Um, so uh, we're going to do some more of those. The last one we did was at um, Pillar Forum, uh, which is a really neat little coffee shop uh, slash skateboard joint. Where's that uh, at? Minneapolis? Uh, yeah, it's on Central and uh, uh, Central, or 65. It's really close to Chimborazo. Okay, yep. Which I know around where it's Of course, at. I love. Yeah, no, that, that place is awesome. So we did a really great show there, and uh, that was a ton of fun. We're probably going to do one at uh, Club Underground coming up here, and we'll do another East Look show as nice. well. But, but that's been fun, you know, kind of doing that. Um, the thing that's kind of tricky about playing flamenco around town is, I mean, Minneapolis is about the only place that does that. I mean, St. Paul is still kind of into, you know, they like the Irish music, which is great, but right. they're, they're pretty 
you know, I love St. Paul, but they're pretty narrow when it comes to some of that stuff. Not everywhere. Sure. I, I, right. don't, I don't want to make that very clear. But uh, uh, so, yeah, there, I mean, I definitely have another flamenco album or two in the works. Um, Dude, there's like there's a bunch of like Latin bands that are roaming around like metal bands, like yeah. Hispanic metal bands and shit. Yeah. Roaming around. Yeah. Should yeah. Jump on some shit like that, especially man. on 7th Street. Yeah. 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 There's some really cool stuff. Have you, you just go check that stuff out or you, yeah. you, oh, yeah. you try to fucking hook up with some of those folks? I, I mean, perhaps, again, I like to do, I like to really focus, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some people are cool with being in a bunch of different bands. I sure. just prefer, I mean, I've got my business to run. I got my teaching to do. Right. I like to be really focused and put everything into it. Instead sure. of, I don't like to spread myself thin. Right. Um, but, uh, um, well, yeah, playing it, guitars like that thing you got back there, and if you want to show that, you can pull that thing out and kind of aim it at this little camera over here. But this thing that he brought here today is probably like this. It's like a what is it? Six by eight. <laughs> I think you dropped a goat. Jesus! Look at this thing. I don't know if you folks can see that or not. I'm not but quite sure of the reference of the camera. It is. It's right there. Yep. Look at that thing. How how many fucking strings is that? thing have like 32 10 10 10 fan fretboard my and uh god i love it i love it there is a goat under you so be careful okay jesus that is a literally that's a, there's there's a goat under you right under oh your did chair. it fall yeah it fell uh-oh it's right under your chair if you scope straight back you'll see him oh almost right oh you literally weren't kidding all right yeah you can squeeze it on the bottom if you want right into the microphone but you get it Push it down. Push down the goat. This week's Greg's one job was getting batteries <laughs> Let me see the, the goddamn goat. goat. The goddamn goat should not be dead by now. I've only had it like 11 years. Let me see that thing, will you? It's dead. Your goat how is broken. How did it die, dude? It f jumped off the speaker. Yeah, well, that's probably how it died. Oh. Poor goat. Marion has one of those at work. Poor I guy. love this thing. It just screams. I hear it go off. Probably way <laughs> off. Poor guy. Yeah. He also yeah. dropped her cup. Oh shoot! Well, nothing was going to leave. So. Well, thank you. We don't want. Yeah. We don't want ants in here. But, yeah. No. I mean, anyone who knows me knows I like weird guitars. I like microtonal guitars, stuff like that. And now you just I want like, a ba like a gigantic bass too, didn't you? Yep. Uh, I have a six string that okay. I bought a couple years ago. I mean, I've always liked six strings. Uh, and the guitar before this one is, like I said, it's microtonal. So um, if you don't know what microtonal is, I mean, the smallest interval that we use in Western music is the, is the half step, right? Okay. But a lot of cultures use the quarter step, right? And um, truth be told, our ears actually have a really huge uh, or have a really wide resolution. We can hear a lot of different notes. There's something called uh, polychromatic music, where the octave is divided into about 111 notes. Jesus. Um, but uh, with quarter steps, so the guitar I have that's microtonal is uh, the octave is divided by 18 notes. So you have like a true A sharp and a true B flat. Jesus. Just like that. Um, whereas this is just 10 strings of monstrous proportion i just i i love it i love it it's it's really fun kind of remapping everything out and um writing new skill patterns 10 string arpeggio stuff like that let it be known mr paul Raphael is the best ninja turtle period that's what he said mm, those might be fighting words no he's awesome i mean which uh, so which uh which particular iteration of the turtles are you talking about because he's awesome yeah, that's yeah. that's on a delay, so we'll we'll get it in like five minutes, and then sure. we'll be like, "What is he talking yeah, about?" Yeah, no, I definitely want no. Tell me which which one because I probably uh, agree <laughs> Sorry, with you. Dude, so. I didn't mean to cut you off on that. No, I, that's good. It's a beautiful guitar. Yeah. Oh, I no, I I I, I adore this. So I'm. It's it's been a lot of fun. Now you you don't have the hugest fucking hands, dude, but you seem to be able to rock that thing no problem. Yeah, it's flexible. How is it? How is it? Flexibility. Play something quick. I mean, just just something really like like just like a little like um. Like one of the, well, you're not going to hear it because it's, yeah. but like one of the new patterns I'm writing for students is. Jesus, dude. And then doing some little 10 string arpeggio shapes too. 10 so. string arpeggio shapes. Yes. Ar oh. Arpeggios. Arpeggio. Oh. Arpeggios. <laughs> They're like spaghettios. <laughs> <laughs> Only more Italian. I just had. Uh, the Def Leppard Armageddon song. Ar is Armageddon it. Really good in it. That's what I put that to. Sorry. I know, Jordan. <laughs> He's very disappointed. He's not, right not looking impressed. 
I see this guy all fucking week long, dude. And I had a meltdown earlier today. Oh no! And and, and it's just it's 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 just great to be around your buddies. Yeah. And, and and to for them to know that you're. You don't mean to be a complete asshole, but it just <laughs> happens sometimes. Yeah, right. I'm just like fucking fuck, fuck, fuck. And I come back, and She Hulk is like, "You're you, you feeling better?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll go." Yeah, <laughs> just sure. good. Yeah, yeah. She goes good. Yeah, yeah. We all need to suck a dick sometimes. Yeah, I was. It was a little one. You see, that was a little bitty one. I yeah. I couldn't. That's bad. That's even worse. I, hey, no judgment. Thank you. No judgment. Micro. I'm glad you're that flexible. I really am. I, I I got these two I got these two ribs real fuck off, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was like the that was like the photo I got blamed for earlier today <laughs> on the wall. Oh, wait, did you ever get that photo I altered of you? It was like you and a bunch of dudes in bed. Uh, was that was that with Al and when we yeah. were, when we were all did in you Chicago? See, and, I, and I put the Brazzers logo on it. Did you yeah, see? That? I did. I did, and it was well deserved. I have to say <laughs> because it was you know, I mean three beautiful grown. Well, there was like an Irishman. I'm not sure what Al is, but Irishman and Hispanic. It, it, it was and, like you and one it of the, like it, a bad joke. I, I think it was you know one of the Currens. Yeah, and, yeah. Irishman. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I'm just like, oh, I can. Yeah, fix we were viol- We were violated by oh, Mike. Oh, by, by Mike. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm like, I need to fix this photo. And oh, fixed it for you. Just to, just so you know, Al and I went outside to smoke. Okay, and Al says to me, he's got his underwear on, right? And I said, dude, I don't know. I could see that he didn't have a shirt on, but I'm not sure about the underwear. And he goes. We should ask him when we go in. <laughs> now, now, just just to clarify, okay, Al and I are butt to butt, facing. You know, I'm on one wall, he's on, there on the other one, right? And they're done. That. And we're we're it's like one flips and the other one flips. You know what I mean? So we're we're <laughs> we're sword fighting first, and that you know, and then back to, and then all of a sudden you just come to this guy crawling into, and he's not under. He's just crawling on top of the covers, but then like. Puts one leg under and slowly tucks oh, himself. Like the girl from the ring. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. Like, what the fuck, you know? And I got a mask on. So I've got a, you know, and I wake up like, <gasps> like this and I look over and I see him just uh, crawling in. Now, mind you, at the time, his girlfriend was like 95 pounds soaking wet. She's tiny. Uh-huh. So I'm going, which one of us did you think was your fucking old lady? Because I'm like four or five times the size of her, and Al is not much. I mean, you know, Al's got to be good 250, at least 225, 250. He's a good-sized fella, you know what I'm saying? But the look on Al's face, and we were outside smoking, and he goes, dude, does he have his underwear on? And I said, I think so. And he goes, I don't know about that. that (laughs) So we're standing at the foot of the bed, and I look at him, and I go, Mike, do you have your underwear on? And he goes, he's got his, got the, the fucking sheets up to here, and he just goes, and I go, you're fucking lying. Your underwear are right there on the floor, dude. What in the fuck are you doing climbing in between two grown men, hairy grown men? Dude, he, he, he was, he put his, he put his arm just caressing Al's fucking nook, dude. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, he thinks he's at home, dude. He was oh. so buzzed up. He thinks he's at home, dude. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was a good one. It oh, was geez. real good. Oh, and I, now you I know, know why Rob gets his own hotel room. Well, you know what? And that's the thing. I kept asking Rob. I'm like, Rob, I'll just sleep on your floor. He's like, fuck no. I'm like, what room are you in? I, I'm, I'm fucking asking everybody. Nobody knows what room his fucking room is until like when we wake up the second day. You know, it was it was ridiculous. But <laughs> he was poking at Mike so hard. That I that I was I I was like I was mad because I was like, you're gonna get this guy razzled up and he's gonna want a fist fight with people and I'm like this is gonna be bad you know we're in a totally different area, we know the people that are involved in the whole thing but at the same time you're just you're in Chicago for fuck's sake you know what I'm saying, yeah. and so I'm giving Rob a bunch of shit by the end of it Rob was at the end of my bed trying to pull me off by my ankles going come on let's go you fucking I swear to God he was gonna droopy dog me like right. <laughs> the fucking window you know what i mean the guy's a giant for god's sakes you know what i mean she's gonna grab my big toe and go no i'm really mad you know what I, mean? <laughs> up, you know? I, I would just like to say that i have made things very clear in my travels with other people 
that there will be no underwear lost and creepy ring lady crawling into bed with me. <laughs> I've done pretty good at that. You know, I mean, I, I can't claim to be good at everything, but right. I, that I'm that I, I got that down. Right. Yeah. I figured, you know, that I was just ugly enough that, you know, this crazy Irish guy wouldn't want to bang me in the middle of the night. I was hey, wrong. take it as a compliment. I, I really did. I, I Never underestimate the Irish. No. It was kind of like one of those things. I don't even remember what show it was, but the fucking, the, the, the older grown up guy realizes that the pastor or the, the, the fucking guy from the church is trying to bang every kid, but him. And he's going, what the fuck do you mean? Was I not hot enough to get molested by the fucking, you know what I mean? Like, it was just one of those deals, dude. Like what the fuck, man? The reality of things. Yeah. 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 You know, it's fun. That's good good travels, but... Uh, See, this is why this is a great podcast, is you can go from great intellectual talk to even better intellectual just, talk. Just nonsense. It's it's absol- ab- yeah. absolutely nonsense, but uh, we have fun with it, right? We always do. Um, so you are creating new stuff. You're, you're in the process of doing the Silic stuff more so than the flamenco at this moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, currently. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm teaching flamenco all the time, but and I'm always playing flamenco. But yeah, the big focus right now is the... Is How many stuff. students do you have that, that, uh, that do that stuff? That do flamenco? Yeah. Not as many. Not too many. Let me think about this. Probably about six. That's um, still pretty that's good That's still pretty number. good, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not... Exactly, a super now, popular you, now genre. You, you kind of hit me on that stuff, too. There, That's like an old family type of, that's like an old, old thing to be handed down, isn't it? It can't like be, yes. That. Yeah, yeah, it can't be. I mean, there's, um, there's like really traditional flamenco where there are forms that you follow and things like that. But then there's a lot of changes that come through as uh, the songs are kind of handed down. You know, they're not really written down. Right. And um, then uh, you've got Interpretation. more. Interpretation. <clears throat> right. And then you've got more kind of progressive flamenco that begins to grab other things from their travels and stuff like that. Right. Um, and uh, so like when I was studying in school, uh, it, it was it was I was really lucky because I was getting into it. And my teacher at the time was. I mean, you just don't go and find yourself a flamenco teacher. Right. Right? So there's only like maybe a couple in Minnesota here. And uh, <clears throat> uh, where I went to school, we, we'd have people come in all the time and show us stuff. And, and it was like the, like the perfect timing. This guy came in, Oscar Lopez, and he was a flamenco player. And I was just like, oh, I'm like, do you teach? He's like, yeah, but I'm only going to be here for like six months. I'm like, I don't care. Like, I will take as many lessons as I can from you. What were you playing at that particular time that that just blew your mind? Because I could see that absolutely blowing your mind if you're if you're really into playing in general and you hear. I mean, it's 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 like a fucking to me like a f- fresh ble- breeze yeah. that comes in. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just <clears throat> <clears throat> well, what happened was I was really into this um, soundtrack to this game called uh, Lords of Thunder. It's called Winds of Thunder in Japan. And the uh, <clears throat> composer goes by Groove King, uh, Satoshi Miyashita. And the whole soundtrack is it's like you know instrumental shred metal, but it's all like really influenced by Indian music, uh, neoclassical. And this one song was all like flamenco with distortion. And I was like, whoa, this is, Damn. This is a great sound. That and, sounds cool. And, and I knew that I heard that sound before, but I just wasn't educated on it. And I brought it to my teacher. And he's like, oh, yeah, this is like flamenco with distortion. And um, learned the song, and he knew a couple little flamenco things, but yeah. I was like, oh, man, this stuff is... And so I started, you know, deep diving into it, going to the library and picking up albums and things like that, and just being like, this is so cool. So when, when Oscar came by, it was just like, this is like the perfect timing. And so I got his number, and then um, I was taking uh, multiple lessons from him a week while he was here. And he got me to the point where I could, like, take what I learned and continue working on my own. And um, so it was, like, really intense study. It was awesome. Damn, dude, that sounds like you're just cramming and jamming that. Oh, it was great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the majority of my of my teenage life was like, all I want to do is play video games and guitar. Actually, that hasn't changed much. <laughs> it's exactly the same. No, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. <clears throat> now that's living, right? There. Yeah, no kidding. You know? Yeah, it yeah. really is living. Yeah, I mean, you you never get sick of it if you absolutely love it. No, you know? I almost never have a bad day, and if I'm having a bad day, I do something about it so it's not. So, yeah. I don't have time that's for that shit. Cool, dude. Yeah, thank you. Hell yeah, that's yeah. that's that's inspiring. You well, know thank what I mean? you. Like, well, it, it makes you not want to walk, work in a fucking warehouse. You know what I mean? It makes you just want to get on stage or even in the. I just put me in the closet and I teach. There you go. Play something. There you, you know go. I mean? so, there you go. I, I mean, I I mean, I I feel very fortunate to be able. I mean, I know this is super generic to say it, but I get to do what I love for a living. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't take that for granted at all. But I got a lot of friends who, you know, what they do isn't their love, but they see it as a means to support the things they do. And right. and nothing's wrong with that, too. It just depends on your own personal happiness. You know, I think that's 
that's the thing that we don't ask a lot. We don't say, what do you do for a living? You say, is what you do making you happy? Right. Right? Because you might be working at McDonald's and be happy. Cool. No one can take that away, right? right. I mean, to me, it's like, it's like there's no bad job. If you like what you're doing, you don't hate going to work every day. Yeah. You know, my wife's a drug dealer, right? And that's what she does, and she loves it. Nice. So fucking pusher dude the legal kind but oh that's good yeah <laughs> you know, i mean but, everything's really legal now isn't yeah. it yeah I mean, um not the good stuff okay well <laughs> i guess it all depends on what you call good Good. Those, yeah right know, yeah that's how it is yeah free basin and slang some <laughs> robotussing is should we take a listen to some flamenco sure right, uh well, do you need an intro or yes please what uh, what exactly what what is this uh this tune we're going to listen to uh, so this tune features uh the great aaron lonick you might have heard of him from yes. such bands as Every Band. Um, <laughs> Beautiful drummer. Yes. Uh, and, of course, you know, I, Aaron and I met when I was in uh, We Are Legion, and uh, then he and I started Isilic together. And, uh, but he's played with me on my flamenco stuff, so he's on here. Um, this song is about how angry I was with uh, two things. Um, th- this whole album was kind of my therapy for the death of my mother in a lot of ways. Had a really cool mom. It was really hard. It was not easy. And, you know, taking care of her and kind of seeing my hero sort of, you know, degenerate. And, <clears throat> of course, there's a whole lot of praying and a whole lot of God talk. And it just, and I knew that it helped people, but it, it pissed me off a lot. So the title of the song translated is Here There Is No God. And it was kind of my way to deal with just how brutal this disease was and how hard it was to see it take her and feeling powerless and knowing that I can't do a fucking thing about it, right? right. So um, so this song is sort of about the breadth and depth of the different emotions I was feeling, you know? Um, and uh, uh, a, a, a big chunk of this is improvised, like, like the beginning and the middle and the end are written, but everything in the middle, Aaron and I just kind of went for it. And um, we actually did the song in one take, which was pretty cool. Badass. That doesn't happen too oh, often. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Aaron's great on it. And we recorded this at No, no Apology Studio in St. Paul. That's my friend Tim. Um, that studio's not open anymore, but uh, he's recorded all three of my solo albums. Uh, great guitar player himself, too. And uh, this particular track we recorded actually in his, uh, in his upper level of his house. It was all wood. And it had this really great hallway where you got this really cool natural reverb. So right. um, I was playing up at the steps, and then uh, Aaron was... Do that again real quick. Do what? What you were doing with your hand. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, okay. Sorry. I was fascinated by that. He just went... <laughs> doing the thing. <laughs> doing the thing. I have, it, I have it to the like the cover of everything so nobody can see that. Excellent. That was for me. That was personal. I appreciate that. that. Uh, yeah, and, and like then Aaron was like kind of like like in the middle of, of the of the hall. I just created this really cool natural reverb. So awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's from my last flamenco album. Well, let's fucking take a listen. Uh, take a listen, folks, and we'll be right back.
so sexy. Paul, Paul, that was very sexy of you. Thank you. Wait, which part? Uh, and, and, I, and I know that I know that it, it was. It, it's it's a uh, kind of a cleansing for you. Yeah, that 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 one there. And, yeah. I, and I, I say sexy because it, it just. Oh, flamenco is sexy. I, I just took my pants off. I still. Oh I, yeah. I still have my underwear on, but my pants are off. Are you sure your underwear's on? Or is it say? Or is it say Mike? The underwear is on. Safe. It's safe. The, the camera can't see, so it's good. Okay. You may smell, but never mind. I thought I could smell yes. copper. <laughs> Did you say I'm menstruating? That's just weird. <laughs> uh, it smells like weed soda and shame. <laughs> I was thinking more of the smell so of despair. So every day, dude? Enough. Is that what you're saying? Every day, weed soda and... <laughs> Hilarious. That's an icy that I'd like to try. Oh, Jesus, dude. Oh. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, the, the whole album was kind of my therapy for the whole thing. And um, I can imagine at that particular time and needing something to to release all of that. You know, I mean, it, it, those emotions and everything there and being a creative person and like still being able to art, having to be able to continue with you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like that's, that's such a, uh, how do you say that? I mean, it, it, it's such a cathartic. Uh, I, I, yes. Very, very yeah. much so. I mean, but it, you, you know, I mean, you're, you're, um, you're going through the most painful thing in your entire life, but you have to still continue yeah. to be productive and do the things that you love the most. And, and, yeah. and, and, and to be able to, hunker down and put something out like that is mm -hmm. it's pretty fucking yeah. exceptional oh thanks you know man i appreciate mean? it yeah i mean and you know not every song is about that you sure. know i mean i've got uh you know the, the opening song is very much about sex you right. know right but there's a lot in there like there's a song called please stay with me and it was a song i wrote for my mom sure you know when she was in in hospice and yeah. uh, so there's stuff like that and then there's um you know this last song that we played is more about the anger of the situation right yeah. um and then there's stuff that was just like hey i think this sounds really pretty uh, you, know? I, you know being be, you know with the last conversation section that we had about about religion and things like that mm -hmm. that has to be a very tough realization at that point you know what i mean because everybody puts their faith in that they they, they a lot of people gain strength from from religion. They gain, mm -hmm. you know, they they put it on God, or they, they, you know what I mean. When when someone expires in this in this particular realm, they, you know what I mean. They they, they push for heaven, and they, they, you know what I mean, like that. Sure. But at that particular time, you, you sit and you 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 may pray and say, if there's anything that can possibly, you know. If you could run me over with a car, my mom would still be alive. You know what I mean? That type right. of, where I, and I don't mean to jest about it, but it's 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 a real thing. And to be creative still and be able to do that has got to be pretty fucking tough. I'm uncomfortable about that because it's there's been so many situations in my life in 51 years that I've lost some really close folks yeah. to me. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and you're like, you, you you you. I've always been taught as a kid too. You know what I mean? My my grandparents were very religious, and my mom's very religious, and things like that. And you, you, you pray on it, but it's, you know what I mean? You, you realize that it's just, you know, your body doing, you know what I mean? It's, you, there's nothing you can do about it. No, no. There you know? Yeah, yeah. And you have to continue. Right. And, and, you know, and it's like, you see people that go through the, the hardships of, of this particular thing, you know what I mean? Losing a parent, losing a kid, losing things like that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, coming to that conclusion that, you know, I, I'm praying for nothing, really, you but know? I think what um, surprised me is... <clears throat> you go into a situation like that where you think my adulthood understands that this is a part of life right? and I understand the logic of things. I understand the science of it, that we're all going to be here in some capacity. Right. And you kind of think that's going to shield you from what you don't expect, which is that little kid is going to come out yep. really loud and say, I don't want my hero to die. Yep. You know, right. And that is way louder than For anything sure. you think you've For built sure. up as an adult. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah, yeah. Kick uh, intellectually ass. too, you know what I mean. Like uh, as much as you learn, and, and obviously you've you've gone through all of the all of the the books and the holy books and things that are supposed to give us all this this information and all this you know knowledge and whatnot, you know, and mm -hmm. the 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 strength to believe and to go on and do all that stuff. And you see a lot of people that are like you know every. Uh, and Facebook is one of those things where it is, it's the, it's good and bad, right? So you keep in touch with all the people that you, you don't talk to on a regular basis and, and you see that they maybe have lost a parent or lost a loved one in some way, a friend, anything like that. 
with parents, I always say, hey, you know what? The thing is, is that that person's blood is running through your veins. So I, you're never going to lose that from anything. I was just going to say, um, when you posted that, yeah, that made me ball so hard. And I put it in our mom's obituary. When you said that, that really hit me hard. And that was really helpful. So thank you for that. Well, if I haven't said that I, I think, before. I think that everybody needs to, and, and it, to, to come to that conclusion, because like you said, with, uh, being a little kid, you, you never want to lose your, your idol. The, the person right. that gives you everything, that gives strength in your life and gives you like, you know, I'm going to deal with this for another day. I'm going to go there and, and, and do this another day. I'm going to fucking fight through this battle and be there. Right. And you know, you think about that, like they're lost, they're gone. And all those memories, you know, you still have them, but they fade slowly. You forget yeah. what they smell like. You forget what those, those little nuances that they they've given you your whole life. I mean, waking up and smelling coffee or they make pancakes or, you know what I mean? Just yeah. the littlest, littlest yeah. things. But a lot of people forget, you know, that, that, that blood is, is flowing through, through yeah. your veins and, and they've given you everything to hopefully get you through the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that being a parent, that's, that's where I'm at is like, I hope that I put my children on the right track, uh, to not do the things that I've done. You know what I'm like? My youngest is, is a uh, very, um, like, Oh, I know you did crazy shit when you were in, and she talks just like that too. You know, like, I know you've done crazy shit when you were a kid, you know? Yeah. And, and I go, that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. What has it to do with it is that I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. And, and I, and I'm your dad and I, I have the right to that. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm trying to guide you to, you know, all these lectures. That's, that's was the thing that my, my youngest says a lot is I don't need a lecture, yeah. you know? And I say, okay, I get that. I understand. You don't want to hear me talk. And I, I can talk with the best of them. But here, here's the thing. I don't want to see you run face first into this bullshit yeah. and, 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 and try to like navigate your way through it. I've been through it and I'll tell you that it's, you know what I mean? There's just a few different things. You, you, you know how it goes, but I have always tried to pass that on to, to my friends who have, have gone through that type of stuff. And, and I have, and, and, uh, um, I really feel bad, like on, on mother's days and things like that when I, you know, cause I, 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 I see Al, uh, you know, Al's a mutual friend of friend of ours oh, yeah. who's oh, lost lost I, his folks. I, I remember when that happened. Yeah, and you know, it's it's one of those things where where I I don't mean to be like ah, I got my mom. You know what I mean? Like, but it, it's one of those things where where I I do I do step back and go, shit, man. Maybe I'm being a little insensitive to the people that don't have their parent there with them right now. And I know that it's difficult. And I try to like say, hey, man, you know what? The best thing you should do is celebrate what your mother gave you or what your, what your family, what your, what your mom or fa father or grandfather, or, you know what I mean? Like today I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, yes, this is the day that I lost that person or it's their birthday, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go do something in honor of their yeah. fucking what they gave me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that to me is so huge. And, and, uh, I, that when I, when I say that to people, like I, I, I really truly mean it because I, I give a shit about, about the people around me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like if I've made friends with you, we're always going to be a friend. doesn't yeah. matter. It, even if, 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 if you've been a shitty person, I'm still going to talk to you. I'm still going to be a friend with you. You know what I mean? I'm still going to be friendly to you. Mm -hmm. There is a gauge. Yeah, oh, of course, <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? but yeah uh, uh, generosity only yeah. goes so far, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, one thing, one of my favorite things to do to celebrate mom is, uh, so Halloween was a, a big, I mean, my mom. Dude, raised, wear a cannibal corpse shirt. Yeah, she, that, and uh, she raised me in horror movies. Because, dude, that is the coolest fucking thing Isn't that awesome? Ever. Yep, she bought, hey, me, dude, she bought me my carcass shirts I, and all of that. I and, said this on the last podcast when we had Nate on here about the kids, and I know we were drinking and having a good time, and I, I'm kind of getting emotional now, but here's the thing is, like, when I see parents at metal shows and they bring their kids there or they're supporting their children yeah. or, or, like, even bringing them to lessons to teach them yeah. something... I don't think people really understand people that aren't into music. I don't think they really fucking understand what it is to, to solve those puzzles. You know what I'm saying? To, to put those pieces together, mm -hmm. um, to open their ears and their, like their third eye, you know what I mean? Yeah, like artistically, yeah. you know, you, you reminded me of something. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's the meat. The, yes. Right. <laughs> Uh, Brian Owens took this video of my mother at one of our shows. Rocking out. And yeah, and he's like, I don't know who this person is, but this is awesome. And I'm like, dude, that's my mom. Was that at Lee's? That was at Lee's. No, 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 no. That was, um, no, that was at, uh, oh, crap. What's, oh. 
what was, it, what was the name of that joint? Uh, it's in Blaine. Coon Rapids, help me out. Pops. Here. Pops, thank you. Yeah, it was at Pops. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've got this great picture of my She's mom. right in front of you, rocking out. Yeah. I, I was at that show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've got this great picture of her giving me a hug on stage when where she's straightening out my hat. You know, just like, how cool is that? You know, yeah. and, and, and I told Brian, I said, Brian, you know, he gave me a copy of the video. I'm like, I'm so glad. You took this moment. You yeah, know, this was. This I was so I cool. was doing uh, I was doing some photography at uh, up in uh, Alexandria, and I saw Rob Carlson's youngest boy mm -hmm. just standing in front of him, watching him play. Mm -hmm. And I had my camera, and I was like, "Fuck, That's man!" Cool. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I didn't have a pops like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I just didn't have a pops. I didn't I didn't get to enjoy that type of shit. Mm -hmm. You know? So when I saw it, I took it, and like years later, I had found yeah. it again, and I contact Jess, and I was like, Jess. I got to get this, I got to get this picture to yeah, him, you know what yeah. I mean? And I gave it to him and I think it's just, I don't know, man, you know, I, I thank you, dude. I, I, I'm glad that it, that it, that it did the things that I said. It did. You know? No, it really did. It was so thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Cause that's, that's all I ever wanted yeah. it to be because it's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like they, they, they give us that stuff and absolutely you we know, forget about it. My, that my, sorrow. My dad's going to be 90 this year. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm a very late addition to the family, right? right. All my brothers and sisters are way older, but uh, right. you know, though. Uh, but speaking of moms, uh, uh, kind of giving us great things. One of the greatest, one of the greatest. Okay, one of the <laughs> it's better than great. It's greatest. It's um, a t a t. I was gonna say, I, well, it's funny you say that because one of the <laughs> greatest things my mom bought for me as a kid, <coughs> when I was a kid, was my at at. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I'm sorry that you don't know much about Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's really, he's really kind of calling you. Off right now. If if there were, I am confident in my Star Wars. Knowledge well, you know, since you since, correct and since you're since you're back on the I podcast, can, Jordan, I can, I can go to sleep at night knowing that I'm right. Jordan, so so since you're back on the podcast, I think that we need to send Paul with with some money to bring back some dueling lightsabers that we can put on the wall and when we get into situations like this Ooh. we see who ends up with the luke hand you know what i'm saying like yeah one hand i have lightsabers at home well, so do i why the fuck don't we have them here you guys should be dueling right now i should be like the guy with the camera going yeah yeah at at attack go go come on man it's the mead <laughs> well, so so I, uh, Nikki and I have what we call our, our honeymoon lightsabers. Yeah. The lightsabers are built on our honeymoon, yep. right? And um, uh, so I could use one of those. <laughs> I mean, it should be even at least. Do you want to go double lightsaber, single lightsaber? We talking Asajj Ventress, double? With the... I'll bust out my, I have my, my Kylo lightsaber. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dude, that fucking noise. <laughs> it just sounds like a like a broken circuit, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. something's just not connecting properly. Well, actually, <laughs> if you want to talk about that, no, I'm not, not going to go there. So. It's because the kyber crystal is cracked. It is. That's what it is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's unstable. Mm -hmm. And how did that happen? It needs the vents to, otherwise it'll blow up. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Sounds like a, like a hot rod. Yeah, because really. if like you bleed that stuff and make a mistake and you get that crack, it's no good. Damn. Yeah. I'm and not aware a, of that. It's alluding to how he's unstable. Right. Mm -hmm. And he how he's fractured. That's one of the one of the coolest parts of going to Galaxy's Edge if you build the lightsaber. Yeah. They have this whole thing. I'm not gonna say much about it because if no one's been there, I don't want to spoil it because you yeah, should don't spoil it. You should go and not know one, but but the I wanna go. We talked about that at your house, I think. Yeah. But but the event it's just the way it's scripted and the way that the music plays in with it, it's just like the first time you do it, you're gonna be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, walk into that place and just ball. Oh, dude, when I did you see the video that Nikki made when I saw the Millennium Falcon? Yeah, and she said, you know, what do you think? And I just said, I wish Mom was here. And everyone's like, you guys supposed to make us cry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sorry, but it's true. Yeah. I'm oh gonna, yeah, no, I'm I got see I, the Falcon and just I got choked up. Fucking. All teary eyed and oh, absolutely. One of my one of my buddies, it was that. his birthday today, and he he passed away like a couple of years, ago, like right in between in COVID sometime, and he and he was by this one of the space shuttles in uh, I don't even know what fucking museum it was, but he's like right by the the thrusters, you know, and he's just like this big, you wow. know, and it's like yeah, that's so cool, huge thing, and I'm thinking to myself, damn, I've never done anything cool like that, you know, it's it's, uh, I mean it. Here's another neat thing about Disney that I 
Disney World that I didn't really know about until I went yeah. is they also orchestrate uh, the music. Like, as you're just walking through the parks, the, the, the soundtrack yeah. for each area is custom tailored for that particular section. So the music kind of transforms as you walk through the parks. Oh, it's, that's really, awesome. it's really cool, actually. Um, yeah, it's, it's from what I've uh, learned and, like, Marion has told me and stuff that Paul has said, like, it's very... Uh, um, I can't think of the word. It's. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, are you trying to say that it's? Uh, I think I think I know what you're trying to say. Uh, are you trying to say it's immersive? Immersive, yes. Okay, great. Like it's, <laughs> but in in ways that are not necessarily super obvious. Right. Yeah. You know, like, it's like subconsciously. Like it. Yeah. Like it feels like it. it you know, you're you're in this actual experience. Yeah. Right. And they try to ma- make it so it's as authentic as possible, yeah. not like, oh, yeah, I'm in this theme yeah. park. Uh-huh. Right. I mean, there, right. there, there's, of course, the reality of, like, there are people in regular clothing there, right? You just have to sort of just, who cares, right? That's just, I mean, you're still in the reality of, of the I would world, be, That would be like the, that, that area would, to me, I, you would have to dress up. Yeah. Uh, that's how I would feel. That, like, I, to me, would be like the Renaissance Fair for... Yeah. Star Wars cast, yeah. you know. Well, what I mean? and and I worked out at Renaissance Festival for like eleven years, and so, and when you go there, you can dress up, but uh, you can't be a specific character. Oh, just because they're trying to keep it to a particular right. timeline, but right. also there are people that are dressed as specific characters, uh. you know, and they don't want you to be confused with you know whoever. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, look at it, Leo. Yeah, right. <laughs> Part I'm gonna, five. I'm gonna go to go there dressed up as like a Lord of the Rings Hobbit. <sighs> I know it was kind of. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I kind of wanted to go there dressed up as someone from Star Trek and be really confused, like you know, how would I get here? Or like a Klingon or something. Oh right? my god, that would be pretty. Uh, you th- you think people would get disturbed by that? Like you're I just think people would going, think it's great. Honestly, <laughs> there's been I saw it at uh, a few Ren Fests. There was um, people dressed up like from Star Trek. Yeah, when, when I used to work out there, we had a particular group that would come every year dressed as Klingons. Really, time seen, traveling, uh, like Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, too, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as the years went on, they got a lot more loose about what they allowed, right? And, uh, um, uh, it, I mean, it's kind of funny because when we, le- and, and, and this also relates to music, the further we get away from a particular genre, the more collapsed it becomes. Right. So, for example, like, I mean, right now, where we are in our lives, we can tell the difference between 70s rock and 80s rock. But 400 years from now, it might just all be rock, right? So yeah, when we look well, at I the, mean, they're kind of pushing it all yeah, there. To, right. I mean, on all the radio stations. Right. This, you but, know, but when you look at things from a distance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when, like we use that word classical music to explain like uh, hundreds of years when there's very specific, like there's, there's, there, there's, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Dark Ages, the High Renaissance, the Low Renaissance. We've got we got Baroque, Rococo. We got classical. We got Romantic, Post Romantic. We have all these slivers. I feel but we stupid. Just call I need it, to I need to know all of that. But stuff. we just call it classical. So like I'm sure like out at the Renaissance Festival, it's like you know those boots are so 1456, <laughs> and your shirt is 1466. That is some <laughs> bullshit, yeah, right? right? And and I'm sure that's that that's what's happening, right? And like I feel like the I feel like the 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 the, the with steampunk folks. I yeah. Think People who dress up normally at the Renaissance mm-hmm. see, see the steampunk folks, yeah. and they're just kind of like, now they've got the you uh, know a couple different booths that have it in there. You know? Here's my thing: have fun. Yeah. Life is short; you're going to die. Get it done. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a question for you guys now, and I forget what it was. Oh, something I ask all my students every lesson is, "What are you guys listening to? What have you been listening to this week? What's what's in your playlist this week?" I have been listening to a lot of Between the Buried and Me. I I, I saw that. Yeah, cool. Me I'm trying to get Greg to listen to their stuff too. And I've been curious because I know a lot of people that really enjoy that. You know what I mean? But, but it's like I said, I have to listen to it mm-hmm. with with you know what I mean. It, if I wake up tomorrow early in the morning, which I normally do because we, we get up at seven in the morning, right? I would sit at my computer, put it on until Jamie woke up or the kid the kids wake up and like enjoy it or get in the car and go for a long ride and like all right i have to listen to the rest of this fucking album to really enjoy it to me they're they're one of those bands that like yeah that they, they have individual songs sure. that are awesome right to listen to but the um, vast majority of their albums are an overarching concept right and it's a story and a lot of it is kind of a seamless 
Like there's no real pauses. Right. You know, like one song kind of goes into the next. And it's uh, listening to them for me, um, I like to do the whole album because it is, you get the whole picture. Like you see, like you, you feel everything about it. Right, and right, right. You know, I'll occasionally pop on just like an individual song if I have like a part. But of you, it but you head. know, but you know the whole yeah. role, and that's the thing with me is like, so when I got into Coheed and Cambria, like uh, there's a guy that I worked with, and I I love the music. I absolutely it reminded me of Rush and like yes, and this really prog style I, stuff. Right, I like Welcome Home, and I don't like anything else. I really? wish I, I wish I did. Really, I, I do wish you I did. To, um, what's the fucking song? I'll have to look it up. Yeah, let I, me know. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of them. I liked a, a few things, but I hadn't really like done like a deep dive. Yeah. And then I saw them and like, I, I kind of got it. So that was the thing for me is like, it was forced on me. Okay. So I like worked with a guy and I worked with three different guys and they, we all, we all loved music, right? Mm -hmm. My stuff was a bit heavier, heavy for them at that particular time, but I love, I love soul music and things like that. So that kind of pulls me back to the question you asked me. I listened to Duran Jones and the indications, uh, earlier this week, I listened to a a little bit of, uh, I mean, just Kendrick Lamar. I mean, I kind of jumped around all over with the Coheed and Cambria stuff. Um, we had to kind of you know, okay, I really like this album. Okay, you can play that album. You play this. And he was like, hey, have you ever heard Coheed and Cambria? So he played it. The the, the That tune you just said yeah. was the song that really caught me. I was like, yeah. whoa, this musically, it was like, damn, it was like yeah. slap in the face, right? Yep. So there's like a couple different albums where they have, where it's 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 a, um, Claudio, the, the vocalist, made a, like a, a, a novel, right? A, a, a graphic novel. Yeah, he it. does a comic book. There's like a, there's like a few of them, right? Mm-hmm. So, and it's a whole, it's a huge like sci-fi. So the dude explained kind of it to me, okay? And I'm thinking, okay, it's a concept album, right? And so it kind of opened my eyes to it. I'm listening and I'm kind of like, okay. And the dude's voice really didn't, it didn't really just grab me. You know what I mean? Sure. And I'm listening to it musically and I really heard a lot of Pink Floyd in it. And I heard a lot of like really weird nuances in it from all kinds of, and I really loved the drums. And then all of a sudden it was like, I really loved the bass lines. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was pulling pieces out of every little instrument and they just, that's what I love about music is sure. that you can hear how things flow into each other. And it's yeah. just Coheed and Cambria, those, there's a couple albums, like two or three of them that really slapped me like, damn, these are really great albums. Yeah. And, and it took me a minute, like yeah. it was forced on me, but listening to it multiple times. And then all of a sudden I saw him and I was like, wow, I, holy I, shit. I always like to go back to stuff. Yeah. And I always go back with the hope that I'm really going to like something. Yeah. Now, now I, I, to be clear, I didn't hate anything. Either. It, was just, right. it was not what I was expecting or maybe in the mood for. So sure. I always like to go back. I, I, I really like it when I go back to stuff and I really like it. And sometimes you don't, you know, yeah. like, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I always love kind of rediscovering something or uh, maybe it's a new to you band and they have yeah. a huge catalog sure. and you know, you just get to kind of deep dive in. Right. So well, that's good stuff. Yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Juno reactor again. Um, not just, well, I actually have never really stopped, but they just released, excuse me. They just re-released their uh, first five albums in this really great set. And um, just kind of reliving that um, the Jedi survivor soundtrack came out on vinyl. Nice. Um, Still played that. Speaking of records, hold on. I should just give you my nerd card right now. Yeah, hold on. So I listened to this week for the first time since I was about a probably 20s. I listened to uh, Death Symbolic. Oh, Way good album. Oh. I haven't listened to that album all the way through since it's probably been over 10 years. Sound of Perseverance is still my favorite, but that's all good. So my, my daughter um, will, will hit me on some stuff. I don't know if you guys have ever heard uh, Joey Valance and Bray. Yes. Uh, they, do a, they do a song called Punk, Punk Tactics, and it sounds exactly like old school Beastie Boys. Mm. And I really, really like when my daughter throws some stuff at me. So I downloaded that stuff. Uh, Ant- Anti-Droid, single by Burton C. Bell. I downloaded that. I also downloaded Jerry Reed's Essentials because I absolutely love Amos Moses. I don't know if you've ever sure. heard. He, absolutely. Yeah, he, he uh, what is he, he, takes out alligators and he knocks them in the head with a stomp, stomp yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, the New Judas Priest, I listened to that. Uh, 
Um, so good. Uh, uh, Skeletal Remains, that one's really good. And I we played this um, when Jordan came back. The new Evernorth um, sing, sing, single, um, Burn the Forest and Nothing to Give. If you haven't checked out this band, the local band Evernorth, they are fucking phenomenal. Cool. They're really, really good. Cool. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'll have to check that out then. So, um, uh now that brings me to another thing I was going to mention. So, oh, so something I get asked by students a lot is, yeah. do you have any guilty pleasures? And I say, there no, is no, because I don't feel guilty about anything I like. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so, I mean, so, so if anything, I, I got to think like, well, what would be, what would, what would surprise people that right. I like? And I got to think about that. Like, well, I love spin doctors, you know, right. Or, and shit like that. But, um, uh, but you know, what surprised Aaron Lonick this week is uh, I told him, I said, dude, man, I'm going to some 41. And He's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> duh. You know, and uh, so my, my friend got us tickets. And so it's their last, it's their last time through. And uh, for, for me, Sum 41 is like, I have so many great memories of teaching these songs to students over 20 years. Right. And, and, and it was always fun. And it was always fun to see my students play that stuff. So if anything, right. it's, I'm more connected that way. Yeah. And uh, so I'm super stoked about that. Um, and uh, their new album is awesome. And I've been enjoying that. Uh, it's but, heavier though, isn't it? Like the the, the new Sum Forty One. Uh, no, I, I, it's kind of all over the place. I okay. mean, if you listen to songs <clears throat> like uh, like um, Out for Blood, that has a great heavy riff to it, right? Okay. Just good, solid playing. I mean, I still think one of their best songs is uh, "Grab the Devil by the Horns and Fuck Him in, uh, Fuck Him Up the Ass." Not in the ass, <laughs> up the ass. I've taught that song a ton, and it's just a good. Again, butt stuff. Uh, thanks, Neil. Uh, by the way, Neil, if you're listening, uh, I likes you. And I want you. And the answer is always yes. Nice. Um, anyway. What do you um, got in that fancy card? Oh, yeah. Okay. There? So I figure we'll do an unboxing here, right? So, oh, here it is. Oh, shit. What do you oh, got? Oh, look at that. What is that? Look at that. This is the this soundtrack to the uh, very first NES TMNT game on vinyl because as we all know you can't truly appreciate it till you've heard it on the original vinyl right does it sound softer it's it's, it's got a warmer sound yeah. <laughs> it's warmer. we had that conversation we did uh, we did have yeah, the yeah. god I th okay all right yes throw it at him we're gonna here we go you did it <laughs> okay any hobby that is how should I say participated in with what with more than f 10 men turns into just a big <laughs> bullshit conversation one of my favorite things that men like to do is anytime something is better than something else, it's warmer. Yeah, it's warmer. So you gotta do two bams because they're warmer. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, man. You, you know what I like about the, you know what I like about the uh, the 2023 Kona? Much warmer ride. <laughs> I like vinyl because it's warmer. But you know what I really like? A track. It's warmer. <laughs> You, you I, can even hear the other song on the other side. Oh God, I'm so. It's like, it's like, what the fuck does that mean? Well, it's a. It's a it's like, no, no, you know, explain to me the warmer thing. Well, I mean, yes, the tubes are hotter, but explain the sound, like, like stuff like that drives me batshit crazy. Oh, it's so crazy now that you can you can duplicate everything, can't you? It's a much warmer sound. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so no, I I pre-ordered this some time ago, and so it's the original NES soundtrack. On uh, where is it? Yeah, ah! right there. There you go. And uh, and the company who put these out limited run every month. They re really. Where do you find ones. this stuff, dude? Dude, I'm I'm tuned into uh, the world of nerdy video game soundtracks. I've been collecting soundtracks, importing them mostly from Japan because Japan was really big into right. video game soundtracks right. forever ago. We're kind of just they kind of really always have been, right? Always, yeah, yeah. Like even cassettes and vinyl things like that. Like wow. some of, some of those old Japanese vinyls are worth a lot of money. I have a lot of the original Japanese CDs, um, but now we're kind of getting into it. And what's cool about this stuff though is. Stuff like this has never had any type of official release. So, right. and these you could pre-order on vinyl, disc, or cassette. Because that's fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. yeah. So, so that's got, when you know you're really into something is when you can find stuff like so, that. So, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, know? and I, I tend to order a lot of my records directly from the company. Um, and then I've got a couple of record stores I just love going to. You know, and uh, what I are mean, your favorite record stores? Um, Ecarta Records on uh, on uh, St. Paul University. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Barley Brothers is cool. Um, and then, of course, Cheapo, 
280 in University. Yeah, yep. 280 in University. Yeah, that's one of my favorite places. What'd you say was that last one? Oh, then there's Barley Brothers, which okay. is on Raymond, which is like basically Kitty Corner from there. Oh, okay. Um, they're good. Um, I like Cheapo, of course. Uh, but which I one, though? Which which location? Well, I mean, uh, I live it in It seems St. like they're more, they're more metal in certain locations than others. So the big metal one would be Coon Rapids. Okay. Um, but I tend to go to the one in St. Paul because I live in St. Paul. Dude, that one in Snelling? Is yeah. that the one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, those guys are great. Dude, I've found some really good shit yeah. on that one in Snelling. Yeah. And everyone who works there is great, too. I mean, they've... Yeah. And Sheepo's been really good to me with, like, my stuff as they far as... They you poop in their bathroom. They too. do. Yeah. They that does care. matter. Yeah. They don't care. But, um, but yeah, so they have, a, they have an entire series of these coming out. So I've pre-ordered every single one. Nice. So we're going to have this. The, the Game Boy soundtracks are coming out. The Super NES stuff is coming out. Um, of course, this is one of my favorite covers from the, the original with the red headbands. And Dude. Yeah. Giddy up. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking awesome. You're never getting laid. No. Um, <laughs> Paul, I think, I, th- I think you might be a nerd. Listen, man. I'll tell you something. I don't see any tape on his glasses. <sighs> Listen, no, I'm super into sports ball. Okay, like, <laughs> like, like when the Super Bowl comes along, I'm like, yeah, bowling, dude. I love bowling. Bowling. You know what I really like about football the when superb they superb owl. Yeah, you know, is when they <laughs> the superb owl is a great is a great thing to see. The superb owl, and um, whenever there's a, a football game, I hope they make plenty of home runs. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, goals are good. Goals are good. So anyway, I'm gonna spin this when I get home tonight. Super stoked! What kind of uh, what kind of uh, system do you put on your your fuzzy warbles on? Uh, so I, I uh, just bought the, the uh, I'm a big fan of Denon stuff. Okay. So I just got the Denon DP400. Okay. And the D- and this is the receiver. No, that's the player. Okay. I thought that's okay. what you meant. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yes, that's what I meant. Okay. The right. whole thing. The, the whole, whole thing. Player. Okay, the whole thing. So uh, so I have a Denon TP, DP400. Okay. That's their kind of one of their newest ones. What I like about this particular unit, um, besides that, just like the plinth and everything is just really, it, like, aesthetically, it looks really cool. Yeah. But it's constantly monitoring the speed, so you don't have to adjust Ooh, the speed. I had go. the Denon DP300 before, and um, great player, great sound. Even the stylus that comes with it is also really good. Um, easy to replace or, or upgrade if you want, but... If you have to adjust the speed, that thing was a bitch because you had to like put it up on like a can and like reach underneath and just the smallest little movement. Wow. So that that's the only problem with that one. But this one, it constantly monitors the speed, so it's always perfect. Right. Um, it has a built-in uh, preamp. Um, and then the receiver I go into is a uh, uh, is also a Denon. That's also my home theater system. What's cool about this Denon though is it also has the um, decoder for uh, quadraphonic albums. So I've been kind of collecting some of those. Old school shit, Yeah, too. yeah. I, I've always been fascinated by weird technology that, like, yeah. was maybe really popular for a while, but yeah, maybe yeah, didn't last. Yeah. But, like, this idea of, like, four channels via vinyl or uh, video disc, not laser disc. Dude, the sound that they could get back then, it was it, it, so warm. Yeah, right. Warm. <laughs> it's a warmer sound. It's a much warmer sound. No, I, you, but you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, mono to stereo to, like, yeah. quadraphonic. And yeah, like, like, right. all of these things. And, like, you... Uh, I watched uh, the Lemmy documentary, right? Mm-hmm. And he's talking, uh, they, he walks into um, uh, one of the big record stores. I can't remember what it, which one. Uh, fuck. Virgin? No. Um, damn it. It'll come to me. Anyway, he goes in there and he talks to the manager and he's like, hey, I want to buy the White Album. And they're like, yeah, did you know that it came in the way it was originally recorded in mono? And he's like, yeah. And they, the guy says, we don't have any copies of that left. He's like, uh, you know, he's doing his thing. All of a sudden, guy comes from the back and he goes, this is actually my copy. I'll fucking sell it to you. Oh, man. You know, and he's losing his fucking mind. And I'm thinking to myself, well, isn't that a lesser sound? And then when you go to a mono, like I've actually been able to listen to a mono album and I'm like, there's really no big difference behind it. You know what I mean? It's still... Sonically, it sounds great. Yeah, I guess a lot of that's dependent on how it's mixed, too, right? Right. So, right. Um, the very first digitally recorded soundtrack was the Black Hole. Okay. And um, I have the original 1978 um, vinyl of that, and that's kind of a neat little piece of history. Um, but um, that and, is pretty. And cool. this gets back into the whole, you know, oh, because it's on vinyl, it's instantly better and warmer. Not necessarily, right? Not necessarily. But uh, I used to teach a. Uh, uh, I'm, well, I, let me step back. I um, occasionally teach um, a uh, music appreciation class, which is the you need to do that before you take music theory. And um, I do a whole vi- like audio format part, right? We're like, what is an- analog? What is digital analog? What is MQA and all these things? And um, I always make sure I prep a you know a, a 
digital analog version of a song and an analog version of a song. Okay. Because I always get somebody who's like, I can tell the difference. So I'm like, I'm so glad you said that because here you go. Because here you go. And I'll go back and forth and it, everyone always gets it wrong, right? It, versus like, here's the analog and here's an MP3 at, you know, 198, right? And, uh, but um, uh, yeah, at, at home, I'm pretty, like, I, I would consider myself an audiophile within the realms of science, right. you know, right? Because there's a lot of just crazy shit out there that's like, well, you got to have the power off the grid because that taints the sound. And you have to make sure that you have titanium-enforced springs to absorb the rotation of the a, earth. I have a buddy like that, and his system is ridiculous. And he's got old components, too, you know what yeah. I mean? Like Yamaha, like really good sounding Yamaha yeah. stuff and old DLK stuff too. Yeah. That's been reconed. And, I, oh, I, I mean, I, I love my Denon stuff. I've always yeah. just really liked Denon and uh, I upgrade every now and then. Uh, I like having a good home theater system and, yeah. but also, you know, good stereo, you know, with good stereo and good, and that with the big thing for me is the quadraphonic stuff, which yeah. is, which is uh, just kind of fun. So, yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, when it comes to like, if I'm out, you know, driving spotify is fine you know i don't need the highest quality right. but at a home i like to you know sit really back and sync really it. sync yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah and uh um which i also find kind of interesting i know so many people who are you know musicians who don't value really high quality audio and right. they're listening i just find that i mean to me I, I guess i'm probably projecting myself on everyone else but i'm like but, but wouldn't you want to have something really nice on there? And you're right so my mom had this old I, it's right there behind you actually an old uh record player that she had in this big stacked um um like receiver equalizer all this other stuff and there was like blown components in it and she had it forever just sitting in a closet somewhere you know what i mean and i was like god whatever happened to that record player she goes oh i still have it i was like what so she gave it to me right so nice. i brought it to the it's not even open anymore, but it was on uh, Excelsior there. It was, I can't remember, uh, Needle oh, Doctor. Oh, uh, Needle Doctor, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so sad that they're gone. But you know who's still around is um, Audio Perfection. Okay. They're in Richfield. Well, I, I brought it there just to have them check it out, and they're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with this player. You should totally use it, you know? Yeah. Um, I bought uh, Jimi Hendrix Band of Gypsies, and I put it on and literally started crying when I, oh, I plugged cool. it in, had it to headphones, and I'm rocking out to it. And my wife had just went to bed, and I'm like, just fucking that's like, awesome this is amazing on record you know you yeah. hear just the, the everything that is record you know what i mean it, I, I'm, if you've got a good pressing and you've mastered it like uh one of my favorite uh vinyls just to kind of show off a system or just to show off that you know when when mixed right and when when mastered for the medium and, and well taken care of yeah. is the blade runner 2049 soundtrack that thing will just rumble the shit out of your house no right? shit, and man. i just love that sound in fact i'm i'm uh i've been asked to uh <laughs> i've been asked to go back and uh, do my lecture on that again too that and, and empire strikes back which nice. actually saw um there's a really um so speaking of just like being extra kind of audiophile e um the uh the Japanese releases of the original trilogy are kind of considered the best pressings out there. Uh, and, just by mixing or just? Uh, so it's a combination of, uh, of the mastering, but also just the quality of the pressing and the, oh, and okay. the, uh, and the, um, the vinyl itself. Uh, so those are worth, those can be worth quite a bit of money. Japan re-released those and I picked them up and they sound so good and uh which is which is super cool yeah but it, again getting back to dudes being stupid again right i mean there's all the, there's all this shit that's that it just scientifically <laughs> can be proven does not matter but right. i think for a lot of people it's it's um if it makes them feel better you feel better and that's fine <laughs> whatever man you know you want to take your homeopathic remedies you're fine but one thing i do i've always liked about records as um because i've been listening to them since i was a kid and big surprise to everyone my very first record was the star wars soundtrack um no way no, who not have thought there, there's kind of this ritual to you know you get your new album and you you give it that first wash with the wood block you know you gotta earn that right you're gonna listen to that album you drop that not the album. wrong way though not the wrong way yeah no. you gotta make sure it goes the right way yeah. right oh man always dry. isn't that right never dry okay never dry well sometimes <laughs> I love it. Never dry. Never dry. Okay, maybe a little bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, that's cool, guys. No, I always like hearing what people are listening to, and uh, it gives me a chance to hear. It's nothing really exciting for me. I mean, I, I kind of jump around quite a bit. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, 
I think it's it's funny to me. We we work with uh with a uh, an African cat, and uh, one day I was. It, Everybody had left a warehouse, and it was just me hanging out. I'm doing some orders, and I'm hanging out. And I just put my phone on, and I'm listening to something. And he comes over, and it's like this swingy kind of like Motowny stuff. Sweet. And you just see him kind of like, he's kind of grooving, you know? And I'm like, I don't think he has any clue of what this is. You know what I mean? And then today I'm listening to something real heavy, and you just see him kind of go over to his 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 uh, his, uh, his uh, is a time card and he's writing his time in it and he just kind of looks over at me like that, you know, it's just going nuts, you know? Yeah. And he's just kind of like, Oh, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I, I see it in his yeah, face. Like, right. Oh shit. I better get out of here. You know, yeah. just do my skin me or something. Did, you know what I mean? Did, like did, um, here's a, here, here's another question for you guys. Uh, did you ever listen to anything that scared you? And, and what I mean is like, um, I remember the first time I heard Carcass, and I had never listened to a band who was tuning down to B standard. I never listened to a band that had um, these really complicated, not just riffs, but the song structure was not your typical verse, pre-chorus, chorus stuff, right? right? And um, I remember hearing it and just the the uh, ambiance of it and just the it, its aggression was really scary at first. I was like what is this? And you know, that, that, that beginning with that, with that quote of, um, um, from the coroner and then it kicks in with, you know, corporal jigsaw quandary. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, it scared the shit out of me and I just wanted more, Yeah, you know, right. Has anything ever done that to you guys? Like, yes. did you ever listen to something and you're like, fuck, what is this? I want more of it. Yes. And it, it, how about you go, you go ahead first, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan, go first. I can't remember what it's from, but I had this, like, compilation sci-fi soundtrack thing. It was just all different kinds of themes and songs from different, whole different, like, eras of sci-fi. Like, from Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, X-Files, like, just all kinds of stuff. And, th and there was something on that that just, I don't know, scared me, but just the sound of it just kind of creeped me out. And I was hmm. kind of young. Do you, remember, do you remember what it I was? I can't remember. Gosh, now I want to know. Was it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like the original um, renditions of these. It, it was like a Philharmonic Orchestra doing yeah. their renditions, right? But there was just There's there was quite a few one of thing that was like, it was a deep cut on the album. And I, cause I would like listen to it when I went to bed and I would have to like. Go past it. <laughs> was it was it by chance the um, sounding. Right. was it by chance the theme to Millennium? Mark Snow. It it may have been. The only reason I think of that is I mean that era. Um, so Mark Snow did uh, X Files, and the theme to Millennium was uh, heavy uh, viola. Was was there a really strong viola for the melody? It's been so long. Okay, since I, I, I I'm really curious I, now. I was like. I, like, like before I was even in my teens. Okay. Know? So like, pr pretty young, and then. Do you remember the compilation? Fuck Look no. it up, man. Look it up. No. Let's see if I can find it. But no, I'm curious. I, 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 I'm, I'm just wondering because it, it like the 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 theme for Millennium has it like, the viola or is it? A, no, it's a violin cello. I'm sorry. Um, has this really? It's a really beautiful melody, but it's also like, super haunting, and it has some really awesome. Uh, chord structures underneath it that make it seem slightly disjointed, yet it's not. And I'm just wondering if that's one of them. I'm kind of taking a guess here, but uh, but I I don't even know if I could like even look it up because it was it's been so long and it you know it was probably just nothing of it was recorded by you know whatever it wasn't the original recordings of the stuff, but sure it wasn't just some guy going at at. <laughs> At, at. Mine was super cheesy. What was yours? Mine was super cheesy because we were talking about the secular stuff, right? Yeah. So, so my aunt had was talking about Motley Crue, and she was like, "They're the most satanic band. You don't ever want to listen to me." You know what I mean? I was like, I was so. I, my mom was into R and B, right? Soul, funk, everything like that. Alice Cooper was like the hardest that she ever went. You know what okay. I mean? And my uncle was into classic rock. 
Beatles, uh, Creedence, fucking anything classic rock. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, hair, hair bands were starting to become something at the time, you know. The they striper, came, wasn't it? Sh- shout out the devil. No, saw and here's stri- the, <laughs> I, I, now I want to I want to pivot off of that oh, one okay. too, though, right, because right, cool. it was it was shout at the devil, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, and it was them, you know, the pentagram and all this other shit, you know. And she was into hair bands. That was the funniest thing about it, is she was like into hair bands, but she was like, this is the satanic stuff. You don't ever, you know, and I was kind of like, what the hell? And then you hear in the beginning, they do that whole fucking, yeah. that intro thing, you know? Yeah. Into shout at the devil. Right. So that was the thing where I'm listening to it and it's like this ominous intro thing. And I'm going, Oh, I'm going to get a, am I going to turn into a fucking beast right at this particular time? You know, and it comes in shout, shout, you know, whatever. And I'm like, is this song about the laundry detergent? Um, <laughs> But I, I, Sorry, I, I I'm just kind of like, I didn't turn into a beast and this didn't make me do anything but want to look for more cool shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it just drove me down that path of, I wanted to find cool stuff. And then it was like, you find master of puppets and you, you know, you see all the crosses in the puppet thing, sure. you know what I'm saying? And then you find Slayer and you find things like that. And I think that's really all that was... I want to say when Seasons of, of, of the Abyss came out, I fell asleep. And the skin, the Dead Skin Mask song, you know, Mr. Keen, no, no, that, all, that whole part, I mean, I woke up yeah, with my headphones on and just going, whoa, whoa, like looking around the room like, holy shit. I was scared shitless at that particular time. I knew what I was listening to, but I had never heard that tune. Yeah, I wake up to it because I'm all a slayer. I'm going to listen to it again, you know, take a good could listen to the tunes and wake up going oh holy shit you know it you reminded me of something <laughs> uh if you don't mind me interjecting here uh please do so when um uh the ritual came out testament um bought the album and i got the shirt signs of chaos and um the back of the shirt had like the chaos symbol where's all the, the arrows going in all you right. know, the, the what, 16 directions um no, i might be wrong on that someone correct me um and um uh, i did not know that that shirt w- would glow in the dark and I hung it on the side, on the edge of my bed, and I remember waking up and being like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> just scared the living shit out of me. And I don't, yeah, just, yeah, that's pretty bad to be scared of a shirt. But it was, it was just, uh, for some reason, that reminded me of that. So, well, that's cool. Yeah, it's interesting how, um, like, sound or music can ignite part of our fears, and it makes us interested in investigating. Now, that. have you, uh, now... <clears throat> I have some friends that uh, I used to trip with qu- quite a bit, you know, and I have a buddy, Ron, who was a master at controlling an entire party with what he selected to play. Mm-hmm. But he would take you on a journey, you know what I'm saying? So if you were really listening, like he would he would sit in the corner and he'd sip his beer, he'd be on acid and he'd be hanging out, but he would be the master of fucking controlling the entire room, you know what I mean? You play something heavy, somebody would get a little fucking sketchy or angry, or they'd start fighting, you'd make it mellow. And then he'd take you on like like psychedelic. There have been several times where I've been altered to where things I've I've been able to hear some stuff that you normally don't hear in an album. You know what I sure. mean? Like just nuances. It's kind of like reading something and taking your own interpretation of it. Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? Like right. it, hearing it and going, holy shit, it just has a whole new meaning to it, you know? I don't know if you remember, but when you were um, when you were taking lessons for me, we did some ear training. Yeah, and I said that um, with ear training, you can learn to hear music like you're high all the time. Right, right, and um, uh, it's it's interesting how you know substances can make us pay attention to things we normally don't think right. to. Um, it's also nice to be able to do that without the need for a substance. Right. But I mean, that's I mean that's been part of ritual for a long time. I think right? that's that helped me. I think that 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 springboarded me to be able to hear it without it. Good. You know what I mean? Good. Like like it opened me up so much to where I'm like, holy shit, did you hear that? And they're going, what? Yeah. And, and and I'm going to be clear. I'm not here to to say no one should have hallucin. Like, at at. I'm not saying it. Uh, I got you. That's rough. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I know how to respond to that. Chicken walker. Um, but uh, no, but you know, so uh, this is not me saying, well, you shouldn't take something. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's cool when you can experience that at all right. times. Yeah. You know, and um, and, and that's a, ne- a neat place to be able to be. It's, it's It takes time, but it's... it's, it's I've had a lot possible. of friends say that to me where like, dude, you have great ears. You can hear things that I've never yeah. even... Well, even when you brought in some stuff, um, you know, there's some things you point out and then there are some things I point out to you and you were like, oh, I never noticed that. And then you hear it and now it's there, right? I questioned you. I know you I did. questioned you on a Geezer Butler riff that yep. you showed me and, and I never, ever heard it before. And I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm going to look up for a live version of it to see him play it that way, right? He's got access to the files that he's like, I know it doesn't sound like this, but this is exactly what he's doing. He's showing me exactly what it is and I'm going... I've never heard that in my entire life. You're out of your fucking mind. I went back. I looked it up. The first video, the first video, I'm watching his hand, and it does exactly what Paul tells me to do. And I'm going, shut up. Rewind. No fucking way. And I brought it back to him the next next lesson. I'm going, dude, okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I fucking question you, dude, because I don't believe you. You should question bullshit. your teachers. I, I totally did. I, was, yeah. I, I brought it back to him. I'm like, dude, you are so wrong. <laughs> you were so fucking right. And he just went, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm trying to, because we had that conversation of when you look up uh, uh the fretting shit. Well, uh, online tabs. Uh, taps. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. So tabs. So, so online tabs. I'm looking the shit up, and I and I learned part of the song that you taught me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, so this is how it is. And he goes, well, not exactly. And I go, okay, so show me where I'm wrong. And he goes, okay, you got the first part of it right, but the last part of it, it's like this, like this. And I go, oh, okay, that makes more sense. And then right away, I'm like. Every fucking tab I look up is fucking wrong. You know what I mean? I'm going, this is so stupid. Because it's just interpretation of everybody who thinks they hear it properly. Where Get close. Yeah. Like, it sounds... It'll pass. Yeah. It'll pass live. You know what I mean? But but guys who listen like like we do. I I mean, and I could say that because we've all been in music and enjoying that for so long. That that, you know, that's, that's one of those things where you're like... I could fucking hear it now. You know yeah, what I mean? and, and to be clear, I don't do that to be like, gotcha, I'm the <laughs> no, teacher. It's no, like, no, no, I know. it's always about yeah, just like, we want yeah. to represent this correctly. That's what, that's exactly what you told me when, when I, when I questioned that, I was like, Hey man, I just really want to learn it right. And he's like, well, I'm glad you said that yeah. because I actually have, you know, the capabilities of, you know, having that, the way it is written and the way it sounds and I can play it for you. You know what I mean? And you did multiple times. Yeah. And that, that's the coolest thing ever is when you can find somebody that can, you know, have the access to do that. It's not because I did take bass lessons from another guy before Mm -hmm. that. And he's a guitar player and he was all about, you know, like when I would see him play guitar parts, I'd go, ah, that's not, I can hear that sure. that's not right. Sure. You know what I mean? But well, you're going to take, yeah, I, I think there's a, I mean, there's a lot of people who think they have a better ear than they do. Sure. And nothing is like, like you said, nothing's wrong with being wrong. Although an ad, I'm not. Um, but I mean, the best thing about being wrong is you learn how to be right. You know, is, is you ask questions. You go, oh crap, no, that's not right. Let me figure this out. Um, I mean, he was an interpretation, interpreter, right? He was an interpreter, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, but I'm just being so devil's advocate. Interpreting it correctly, wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but I, but oh, go ahead. How I'm sorry. many? How many? How many dialects was he actually? Did he know? He knew a fuckload. Oh, like billions, yeah. Yeah. So how we? I mean, I'm gonna trust. I'm just saying. PO. I'm just saying. But I, but I was gonna say, um, like, uh, um, <laughs> rem- remember when we used to do the the Dime Big Daryl show every year? Um, no, and yeah, I know this is this is, this is great. I just. It's, I it's love that <laughs> he said earlier, he's like, I hope this never ends. <laughs> <laughs> is, you guys are just going to be poking never at each other forever. Yeah, right. you know I mean? yeah, if you let me do a speech or something at your wedding, get ready for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> the broken crystal, bro. That's all that is right <laughs> yeah, this, this fucking conversation is, you know, you don't know whether what is right, it's broken. It's just... <laughs> It's fantastic. It. I love this. It's cool. I love you, Jordan. I love it. Even if you don't like pickles. It's okay. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, um, but like uh, Axel. Uh, uh, from, Foley? Uh, no, Axel. Um, um, Rose? No. Oh. Um, uh, from 
uh, God dang it. Um, the car. No. Okay. Uh, the I, wagon. I'm really bad at remembering my students' last names. Uh, but he, but they did the Pantera stuff. He was the, okay. he was the guitar yeah. player. He was yeah. a student of mine for a little bit. And a um, uh, great guitar player. I mean, uh, uh, is it Agado is his last name? Sorry if I said that wrong, Axel. I apologize. Um, but, uh, but super cool dude. You know who I'm talking about, Jordan? Am I? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And uh, I mean, or. Probably. Okay. Well, anyway. They they would do the Pantera stuff and they, and they were great, and um, one day he, he they were getting ready to do another show and he was sh- playing through Cowboys from Hell and I said, play that for me would you? And he played for him like, that's close, that's not what he does there though, and he was like what? And I showed him and he's like, he listened and he's like, I've never noticed that. I'm like yeah, everyone plays that part wrong, and this isn't me trying to be like you know well I know the real thing but it's like yeah. if you stop and listen this is not what he does it does this and then he listened he's like. I never noticed that. I'm like, that's okay. Most people don't. Dude, and that's the that's the crazy thing about it too is that it's so many people have their ears are aren't tr- they're not trained to it. All of the other things around it are just kind of Well, I you know what I think it mostly is. I mean, yeah, there's that, but um like of all the songs that I've taught, I mean, you know, I have certain ones that would be like in like the top 5, right? Sure. It smells like Teen Spirit. Sure. Iron Man, Stacy's Mom, right? right? Stuff like that, right? Um and what happens with a lot of these songs is one person learns it, and then it becomes a game of telephone, right? Where another person learns it, and right. no one stops to check the original recording right. to it's see. It's Tracy's mom. Right. It's <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's mom has got it. Go- oh, I want to hear that one. Um, and, and, so, and so one thing I tell, and you remember me saying this, yes. you know, when I have a I student, do. I said, make sure you have the recording right there to you make sure. You use those three examples. As <laughs> exactly. You that yeah, time. right. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, so someone will play Iron Man for me. I'm like, yeah, that's close. It's not what he does, though. Right. Yeah. And, well, it's close enough. It's like close enough. But that's like saying it's not just good. It's good enough. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's that's Isilic. We're not just good. We're good enough. That's an old we are legion thing. But um, and I mean, I'm also like, like, if you just want something that represents it, that's fine. But if you want to learn this song as it is, let's examine it and really figure out what's going on here. Right. So, I mean, I see Iron Man played wrong a lot. I see Paranoid played wrong a lot. Megadeth yeah. plays it wrong. Right. Right. And it just like it's like if you're trying if you're trying to literally copy the song um uh and if you don't care that's a, that's fine too yeah. right uh but uh i'm just How kind of a, not though I, i'm kind of a real stickler there's there, there's like there's now there's two songs that drive me nuts that i hear people play incorrectly I, so I'm, I'm gonna go on a little thing here go ahead. two things breaking the law love the song but the last four measures every Buddy plays that wrong because they change the rhythm of the da na na ba 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 na na. It's different at the end. The rhythm is kind of inverted. Okay. So you get this guy ba da ba ba da ba da da ba da da ba ba da. It's different. Okay. And everyone seems to skip that. They go, oh, it's the same. It's not the same. <laughs> that drives me nuts. I have the tiger. Fucking a! People screw up the intro all the time. You told me this one too. Yeah, yeah. They, they forget that with that you know, exchange of rhythm at the last part, the part that makes it sound so cool. It's like, God dang it, you fucked it up. Right? Yeah. Do it. Vocalize it. You got to do it. That part. Okay. Drives me nuts. Yeah. I'm a horrible singer. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I love it. I was known that, for that. That is that is exactly what happens inside a rehearsal space oh, when yeah, somebody comes in with something and there's a drummer and there's a yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Bo-chica, sorry. Chica, chica, go ahead. You reminded me of something and and uh, I, yeah. Sorry, I'm not just kind of blasting here, but uh, one of my students was asking this week about um, like some of the rhythm ideas that Silic uses, right? Yeah. Like some kind of like that kind of stuff, that yeah, thrashy yeah, yeah. stuff. And I was asked, well, what's your inspiration for that? Like, do you grab it off of like Exodus stuff and things like that? And actually, rarely a lot of my stuff comes from metal. It comes from like music of the world. But a lot of the rhythms I come from, or sorry, I come up with come from auctioneers. Really? So every every year, uh, there used to be this really awesome auction by Graffe Auctions where they did arcade machines. You know, and as, as you guys know, I, I collect arcade shit, right? Yeah. 
And just hearing these guys, one get about, one get about, forty hit, hit, myself, sold to the man to be, one get about, one get about, and then get about, and then get about, and then one get about, one get about, one get about, sold to the man who was missing an arm, and then one get about, 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 hey, 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 right? Auctioneers, man, I would, so I would go there and I'd, re- I'd put up my phone and I would just hear that, you know, one get about, one get about, forty, one get about, sold to the man with the large testicles. <laughs> <laughs> so neat, right? Yeah, I mean, just. I, I mean, these guys, they they just, I mean, they're so clean and clear. Yeah. But it's just that, you know, right? It's like. Yeah, so au- rad. so auctioneers <laughs> is actually where I get a lot of my ideas from. Pretty fucking cool. So, Zach and I are going to be going home and watching an auctioneer. Yeah, I'm getting about, get about right. party. I'm getting about. Well, it's going to pop into my head no matter yeah. what. I'm going to hear that. I'm going to go, holy shit, that's yeah. like a good. Yep. The, dr- the dryer at my house does this fucking. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a solid beat, but it's like a do good do 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 it's like all of a sudden i'll catch it and i'll be like and I'll, I'll make this thing and I'll start tapping it and I'll go, oh, and Jamie will go, knock it off. You just hear fucking yelling at me because I'm playing it, playing along with it and I'm hearing it and I'm going, yeah. fuck, that would be so cool with a fucking sick guitar yeah, over right. the top of it. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. All I can hear now is Meshuggah, but auctioneer voices. <laughs> One get about, 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 that's all. Hey, 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 but I know one get about, my It's just an auctioneer with distortion. Yeah. Right? Well, what I also like about the auctioneer is you've, <laughs> so got, is you've got the auctioneer and you've got the heckler, the guy who goes, hip, 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 hip. So you get like this polyrhythmic thing. You've got, sold to the man missing the left arm. The, sh- the shorter ankle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We going to play another tune? Yes, we are. But this is going to conclude our rants and ravings of pure chaos in the whole evening. Are we going to talk after the song, or do you no. want me to talk about... Okay, talk, to talk about it now. I wanted okay. to, I, what I want to know is, is so there has been some changing of the guard. There's been some changing of silicon in general. Yes. And, and I thought the coolest thing about when we were talking about this off-air is that you made it a fucking instrumental band, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So tell me about it. We're going to be an instrumental band. <laughs> cool enough. And here's why. It's a much warmer sound. It's a much, <laughs> it's a much warmer sound. Um, I, you know, I've always, I'm glad I didn't drink. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I should have waited. Um, uh, I've always wanted to do an instrumental metal band band um fully instrumental um and within the progressive genre i guess because you know everything's permitted um so this is the first song of course this is fissures and um right now we've got probably five songs finished um We've got a song that's written entirely with Japanese music theory, and I'm going to nice. be playing a very rare Japanese instrument on nice. it that I play. Uh, so we're going it, to, it's going to, uh, it, this is definitely an album that it, we're not thinking in terms of playing live. I mean, we will play it live, and it'll be heavily modified with samples and things like that, but, but we're not thinking in terms of a, uh, usually when I'm writing metal, I'm thinking I want to play this live and I want it to sound a certain way, but this, we're going to have a lot more layers and a lot more instrumentation, some unique instruments coming in. Right. Um, and uh, that way you don't have to think about, you know, how many guitar changes do I have to make? Because I do that to myself. I'm, I'm like, just like, well, I can't just stick with one guitar tuning. I have right. to have like six. And I bring Well, then you got that guitar. fucking giant fucking eight by six over there. I do. Yeah. Right. And then we got a song that we're writing for that and everything. I got stuff for my eight <laughs> string. I got just, just, oh, I just can't, I can't I just stick it. with one thing, but, um, and and it's one thing I like about instrumental music, very much like flamenco, is um, when you're trying to get a concept across and you want your audience to understand it, that's an extra challenge. It's one thing if you're just playing stuff and uh, you're, you're cool with anyone's interpretation, but if you're trying to really like communicate a particular sound, I'm sorry, or a particular meaning in it, that that's kind of a fun challenge, I think. Right. Um, and uh, it uh, it also kind of allows me to flex some of my other experience with other instruments and, but, uh, but, and, and everybody's, you know, like Aaron Lonick's going to include a lot of, you know, um, uh, world percussion and Greg 
like I said, if you ever see his his pedal board, I mean, like his small one is about as big as this desk. Damn. It's nuts and awesome. So, uh, so we're kind of writing this album, I guess, thinking it's going to be a studio album. But if, when we play this stuff live, we we have ways that we're going to make it happen. So, Fantastic. Um, and I guess what we're just really excited about is kind of this new direction. Um, uh, Greg again is doing our artwork. Uh, this song you're going to hear has a uh, animated video he did again, uh, which he did uh, that for midnight hour in the last one uh so and and i think they i think the guys talked about that when they were on last they showed you midnight hour and that has a really cool uh hand animated video as well in fact this uh, art teacher in france used it to illustrate to her students how to uh how to properly uh convey the uh darkness of a forest is how she put if i understood oh. the french right which was pretty cool oh nice that's, that's awesome yeah we are most of our fan base is in eastern europe uh, a lot, of, a lot of people. Poland seems to be our biggest fans. Poland, Prague, um, Ukraine. Um, so that's kind of neat. Uh, War music, dude. No kidding. They're yeah, fucking Russia yeah. up with that shit. Yeah. Well, what's also interesting too that so uh, <coughs> uh, the last release we were a little like, ah, do we want to make CDs? We know that people locally like CDs, but I mean that's generally most people don't buy CDs anymore. So we we did a run. And we sold out in about a month. Wow. One thing I did not know is that in Eastern Europe, there is quite the culture of collecting specifically heavy metal CDs. No shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that was kind of a neat thing to find out. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was a surprise because our original idea was like, well, these discs will be like a little extra thing if you buy a shirt or something like that. Sure. Um, so are we going to do that again for the next album? Probably. You know, uh, but uh, the, um, the ease of releasing things digitally is always great because that removes a whole series of costs, but there's just, for me, there's something about having the, uh, the physical product, you know? Right. So <clears throat> it's, it's neat. It's just neat to have that. We also did on the last album, we did a limited, uh, picture disc as well. It's a square record actually. And, right. Uh, we had two songs on it and, and, and that was a lot of fun. So we might do something like that again too, but uh, kind of the point of this new album is to really kind of stretch ourselves, challenge ourselves more. Um, I write heavy metal very differently than I do just about anything else. Uh, whereas, like, when I'm writing flamenco, I tend to write from a very specific emotion that I'm trying to communicate. I might even have the name of a song ready. Sure. But for me, writing heavy metal is like, this is what I think is fun to play. This is me having fun. This is uh, me doing all the things and having a good time. And then if someone grabs a meaning or interpretation from that, that's awesome. I, it, right? Um, but it is a is a very different process for me. And then what I really love about Isilic and working with Aaron and Greg is, there's no ego. Um, like whenever, like I could write an entire song, but then I bring it to them and like tear it apart. I want to hear what you guys come up with. And it's always right. better. It always gets better, right? Sure. Greg will do something that makes me rethink the way I wrote something. I'm like, well, should I rewrite it or should I keep it? Because it sounds so cool of what you do, right? right. Um, let's try all the things, right? And I, I just know so many bands where it's like, I wrote it this way. It should never be any well, other way. It, it, and I kind of want to interject a little bit too, because I, I know that uh, as, as a musician and, and with, other talented musicians, and I'm not taking anything from vocalists at all because I'm, I'm a vocalist myself. Sure. But it would l allow you to stretch your legs a bit more because you, you're not restrained by we've got to put this here and that there. And I feel like you would be able to articulate uh, musically what a what a vocalist would be able to do right. in those those situations anyway. Right. Um, right. I, I've never been able to to like, hey man, we wrote this just like this, right? Put your lyrics over the top of it. Right. I've always been like, hey, it needs to extend here. It needs to do this here. I need to add a little bit here. Absolutely. If I have my my ability to do that, you know what I mean? Uh, now, when you're just going straight for music, it's mm -hmm. got to be so, like, liberating at a point. It, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just uh, sure. let it go. Yeah. And, and But that also, because it's way more open, you have more challenges too sure. it's like i mean even though there may not be lyrics you know we may write a particular rhythmic section and then i realize oh um if we want the solo or this next part to develop more this needs to go on eight more measures or something like that so there's still that to keep in mind sure. um and uh you do know you feel, do you feel like it gets lost at all to where you you have to search a little bit more to to to, to feel it a, a bit more i mean i, I wouldn't say so not for okay. me anyway not okay. personally uh, but i um, when it comes to writing like leads, I uh, like you can write a lead first and then write a rhythm to it. And, right. and, and some people that works best for me, I like to write a cool rhythm chord progression that I like. And for me, it's much easier to write a melody based sure. off of that. Right. I have done it the other way around and I can, but I just prefer to, to do it that way. Do you but, feel it flows, flows better 
one way than the other? Not necessarily. Okay. No, I think it just depends on what is best for the song. Um, and uh, one thing that Aaron is really good at doing is coming up with really cool arrangement ideas that maybe I don't consider, right? And Greg has some cool ideas there, too, about... Right. Uh, well, one thing I like about the way Greg writes is... Um, like, when I think of a bass player, I think of a bass player as three people, right? right. They, they lock in with the drums. Sometimes right. they lock in with the guitar. Sometimes they're an independent part, right? right. Um, and I really look at Greg as, like, another lead player. Like, I really don't look at him as, oh, there's a bass player. Like, he's the other lead guy, right? Oh, for sure. He's got a lot of responsibility. For right? sure. Um, and uh, He shows that, too. Man. He does, yeah. Right? There's, nobody writes like Greg. Right, he's he's one of the reasons I, I do very to work well. With him. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, we do. Yes, <laughs> it's we all do. Greg's. We're singular. It's all Greg's. They're all one Greg. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he's just like, please no, just stop. <laughs> and and but it's it's cool. You know, like I'll come in with an idea, with a concept that I have in my head of a riff, and then Greg will do something that's really awesome and just builds upon it. So I, I love that. Um, I get to come in and, it shows, dude. and hear things transform, you know, and uh, um, it's just, we're not afraid to try all the things. We're not afraid to, you know, uh, to say, well, let's try it that way. Oh, well, you know what? That sounds better, right? Um, that's why all did, I want. Why does that sound so amazing to me as, as, the, as older, the older I get, it sounds so, so amazing to me to not have any restraints at all, where when you're a young player and you're into like metal, you think, it's just going to be the heaviest thing on the fucking planet. You know what I mean? And, the, and the, you're just like, you develop to where it's like, there's no boundaries in it, man. You have to just keep expanding, expanding, expanding. You know, it's like adding water to it and it just grows and grows and grows. And then eventually it just branches out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't see the, 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 the binds anymore. You know what I mean? Or, like you can, or you the can fighting maybe. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the hardest thing to do for composition and um, this is something I really work on with my students is, um, is to is to s decide this is it, this is the thing, right? Because there's so many other options. But at some point, you have to sit down and just go, like yeah. that's good, that's good. And uh, one thing that I think really helped me with that was in um, so when I was working with my composition professor, we would right. do stuff like you got two hours to write a piano sonata, that's it, go. And so it may, it forced you to really quickly decide, like he said, just get to good enough and then you can learn what is great. Right. right. And it really allowed you to, to kind of know about the way you write and how to make better decisions about stuff. Because right. if you second guess forever, you get nothing. Right? right. And I tell like all my students in composition, I said, come with your worst shit. Come with the stuff that you think sucks because yeah. it probably doesn't and, and it never does. Right? right. But maybe you just need to hear it twisted a bit or maybe you need to hear somebody else play it out of your context. Right. So bring your clay and then we'll we'll play with it. Right. Um, but That's for brilliant. That's brilliant. But for thank you. But for a lot of people, it's it is hard. I mean, and you guys probably know, like you think I could do this. I could do this. Yes, you could. But then you have nothing. Right. Right. At some point you have to decide this is it. Right. Right. And be confident with that. And that's hard to do. I think that takes a long time to learn. Like uh, even for me, to be honest, I mean, I think it wasn't until my third solo album where I went. Yeah, that's good. I don't have to second guess that, right? Yeah. Um, and with this last Isilic album, I was like, nope, don't need to do another take. That's how it should go, right? Um, uh, it, you know, this kind of, I mean, to me, there's this perfect balance between you want your recording to sound good and real, but it's so easy to overanalyze something. You know, right. I, always, I always kind of describe your song yeah. as like a wooden sculpture, right? Yeah. So you cut the parts, right? You've got this really cool panda bear or whatever, right? And then you're going to sand it down, right? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna tighten it up a little bit and then, you know, just double check to make sure you didn't miss that, miss that. And then you start seeing things that aren't there. And you're like, well, let me sand I that picture a hand. I picture a hand, you know, when you see like a, a normal, you know, a wooden doll. Yeah. It's, it just has a hand that's right. like this. Or maybe like that where it can grasp, grasp something. Mm -hmm. And adding more to it, you know, can add just that much more. Yeah, right. You know, because right. you, can, you can control this. Right. And you can control that. And you may be able to grab something and grasp it and control it and make it look, you know, mobile and, and able to use right but when you start to add this now how yeah. can you control all yeah, that right. now you know you're adding right. so much to it and now it's become something that it's like fuck okay i want to articulate how it does this but then i'm going to add something to its hand yeah. and then when i go like this it's going to go right on the ground yeah. and if i don't have you know what i mean like it's just 
yeah, the way I think of it with the the whole thing with the um, with the wooden sculpture is, you keep sanding, yeah. you keep sanding, you see things that aren't there, and now you've got this awesome toothpick. It's a great toothpick, right? But it was a really cool looking panda, right? And um, it's a fucking great analogy, right? There. You know, and it's just, and I, it's just like it, it's, but that's I think that's hard to do for everybody. That's not you know, right. I mean, I think. Uh, because you always think of the other possibilities, but right. and that's true. Well, then maybe turn those other possibilities into a different song, then, right? right. Um, but there is a point at which, like, in fact, I just did an exercise with a student last uh, yesterday. It's like we're going to write a punk song in a half hour. Go, and we did. Yeah, right. And, then, and, 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 and that's what it's just like. You got a half hour. Get it. Get it done. Right. right? right. No one's going to do it for you. Right. And um, so I, I think exercises like that help people to kind of like throw away the doubt for a second and just write. And, yeah. And one thing we always did in, in school was every day we wrote because composition writing is a craft that has to be practiced. It really is. Yeah. It's not one of these things like, Oh, I need to have inspiration to No, This is just a guy trying to get laid. Okay. Just shut up. Right. You're not a composer. I right? loved getting in a room with a fucking capable group of dudes that are just like hey i got a riff oh yeah what's that riff repeat that riff yeah. over and over and see what spawns from yeah, that absolutely. particular thing you know what i mean and you got atlantic in there where it's you know he's fucking throwing it down and throwing it down all of a sudden it's a good and you're like oh that's where you do that again yeah, you're right. playing you're playing the riff and all of a sudden he goes into that go 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 and you're like oh okay I, now i feel it and fucking greg looks over and it's well, one thing I tell all my students is that um, music started with that sounds good, do it again. Yeah. Right. N nobody sat down at a table and said, here are the rules of blues. Here are the w rules of Baroque. It started with that sounded cool, do it again. Right. Yeah. And um, if it sounds cool, do it again. Yeah. Put it in your song. Right. Yeah. Um, there's really no way to write a song. It's, yeah. it's, um, it's nice when you have more tools, but like I, I think of the very first song I ever wrote. Right. Yeah. And I can look at it now, and I can make it sound like I did something great. I can say, well, I started with this uh, E minor at four, and then that went to a C5 plus <laughs> sus two. Yeah. And then it, but what it really was was, dude, if you turn power chords upside down and you play them with open strings, they sometimes sound really cool, right? That, that's what it really was, <laughs> right? I mean, you could in, over, -intell over intellectualize anything. So, but uh, but anyway, so yeah, so this is uh, so this is the song Fissures. It is the uh, new song. Um, is it out yet? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. the, yeah. So you can. Uh, it's on our Bandcamp. Um, again, there's a music video on the Bandcamp. The there is, I, I, have it up. I don't think the music video is on YouTube right now because it I think is. there is some. It is. Well, right the song's there. on YouTube, but the music video. Oh is not. yeah, okay. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. But you can buy the song on on, uh, on the Bandcamp, and it is uh, streaming everywhere. The Vision. And uh, uh, this song is uh, well, a little more straightforward than we usually write. It doesn't have the five thousand time signatures, uh, but uh, it's mostly based off of uh, a, the good um, feels. A, a the good feels a harmonic Phrygian uh, mo a scale and uh, some. Uh, um, Armenian stuff. I love Armenian sounds, so there's a lot of that in this. And then awesome, just dude. stuff that sounded cool, so. Well, thank you very much for coming in, Paul. Thank you. This Appreciate has been fun. It. It's always fun, but this is great. It's uh, great chatting with you all the time, man. I just love it, and I love the banter between you two Star Wars nerds, and it's great. It's at at. What is it? At at. I'm not even going to acknowledge him. No, he doesn't wow, have to. He doesn't have to. Oh, dude. It's okay to be wrong, though, right? It's okay to be wrong. He just has to accept it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it so much. Well, here's some fissures from, uh, what's the name of the band? Esilic. Where can they get it from? So they can get this at Bandcamp. So you look up Bandcamp, you look Esilic. Um, oh, and then if you want to pick up my flamenco stuff, that's at Paul Wallace Esch on Bandcamp. And a lot of it right now, I think I've got it right now, is like eight bucks an album, but every now and then I do the name your price. So when I do that, you want to give me a cent and get it? That's fine. You're nice. cool with that. And so. you heard it, you heard some of it, the earlier stuff too, uh, the second song that we did. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put that up real quick so they can see it one more time. That one right there. Yep. So, so go that. check it out. And we're going to listen to this one. Thank you again, Paul. Appreciate thank you. It I appreciate much. it. It's been a lot of fun always. Jordan, thank you very much. Jordan, thank you. I get to see you Monday. Yep. AT, AT. I'll see you uh, Sunday. Sunday, Monday. At, at. There we go. AT. <laughs>
Ritual Madness Podcast. Ritual Madness Podcast.